the situation going on um, in Oregon, the uh, UCC shooter. And I want to sort of juxtapose that against um, some of the things that have been going on in Iraq. Now, uh, currently, um, I'm sure many of you know the news that in Iraq, there are, um, you know, there's a, a hospital. The Doctors Without Borders was uh was bombed by the United States government. And, you know, I'm sure they're really appreciative. Thanks so much for getting that done for us, guys. And it's, um, well, it's it's probably pretty frustrating for many people who are uh, familiar with, uh, you know, watching these, uh, these events unfold. At the same time, we're being told by the government that, Essentially, this is this is I'm, I'm conjecturing, right? I, I, I'm not entirely certain that Barack Obama believes that some of your gun rights should be taken away. I don't think he said that. He said something to the effect of we need to have a, a national conversation on it. So I want to have that conversation. Now, when I re- watch, say, Meet the Press and I, you know, the Democratic side is pretty clear who's who's on which side. The Democrats want to limit your Gun rights. They want to, you know, they want more background checks, better background checks. We, what we need is better background checks. Well, the same people that want to provide you with better background checks bombed a Doctors Without Borders hospital this week. Congratulations, guys. Way to show your utter failure. But this is what the government does. They're an organization that fails its way to more funding over and over. You wish you could fail this well. You can't fail like this. You've never been able to fail like this. When you fail in your life, you get less funding, not the state. The state's funding just continues. It increases. Its power grows. And I'm just flummoxed. I'm Flummoxed because there are grown people with great minds that live their lives every day and manage to make really good decisions, listening to my voice right now, that continue to believe that the government is going to provide them with a solution to to problems. These are the last people we want solving this problem. Is the power, uh, the, 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 the draw of power so great? Is the siren's call of the state so powerful that you can't figure anything out except we must pass a law? That's the best solution you've got? The government had the UCC shooter. I don't have his name written down because I don't want to say his name. Um, He was looking for attention, and so I'm not going to give it to him. He's dead. If I believed in hell, I would hope he was there. But he's not. And I don't really believe in hell. And, and I guess I don't hope anybody goes there. Um, they had this guy for 13 years. In all likelihood, he was a government school student. It's possible he was a private school student. But I don't think so. So he's a government school student. 13 years they've got this guy. In 13 years, they can't figure out whether or not He's too dumb to have a gun or whatever. And somehow or another, I mean, he wasn't flagged for anything. Somehow or another, he's going to, um, well, now we're going to be, they're, they're going to put up an apparatus that's going to figure out that this guy was uh, a mess or something. I just, you know, come on, guys. You are utterly incompetent. You bomb the hospitals that are trying to help people in the countries that you throw into disarray, you kill far more than mass shooters here in this country, and then when a solution comes along, you say, hey, give us some more power, we'll fix it. Now, I don't frankly think the Republicans are the ones to solve this problem either. Yes, I, I did see Meet the Press, and it was the uh, the Democrats that were advocating for more uh, gun uh, restrictions, because it's, well... It's death to the Republicans who uh, advocate for gun restrictions. But the Republicans are no better. The Republicans oftentimes are just wanting to enforce the gun restrictions we currently have. 20,000 unconstitutional gun restrictions that we have in this country. When I read 
the United States Constitution Bill of Rights. It says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And then it rambles on about a, a militia. It's a poorly written um, uh, you know, Second Amendment. However, when you look at the other documents on which it was based, it's pretty clear what was going on at the time. Is that The idea was is that a person had the right to have a gun to protect themselves and them, their families, um, their homes. And in New Hampshire, that's what it says in their uh, uh, second 2A is what the um, provision is. Well, you, you think that you're going to uh, you know, solve this problem by restricting the Second Amendment? That hasn't worked so far. It looks like mass shootings are on the rise. I don't know why mass shootings are singled out when you look at gun crime generally. Um, you know, there's plenty of instances where people have managed to use guns to prevent crimes but people say and when it comes to mass shootings oh well it's never a gun's never been used to stop a mass shooting so what we need is got more gun restrictions because mass shootings show up in the news they're very newsworthy and I, it it disturbs me well there's a lot of dying that goes on because of handguns in the United States i wish i knew why that was i wish i knew why um you know there were so many people shooting each other in the United States. I don't have a good solution for this. But I can tell you, taking away people's gun rights, well, I, I don't find that to be a particular solution. Sitting down with me right now is uh, Rich Paul. Hey, um, appreciate you coming in, Rich. The, uh, the thing that I'm talking about here is the Doctors Without Borders uh, bombing. Have you Are you familiar with this? Yeah. So I've got an article here from FPP.cc, and it uh, talks about the Doctors Without Borders, which I guess they have a French name um, that they sort of prefer, something like Medico Sans Frontieres or something like to that effect. Mm -hmm. But uh, on Saturday morning, a trauma hospital run by Doctors Without Borders in um, Kunduz, Afghanistan, was hit by a series of aerial bombing raids at approximately 15-minute intervals, and in all likelihood, that was the United States. They're investigating to make sure... But since they're the only one flying airplanes over Afghanistan, chances are really, really, really good that the same people that want to take away your gun rights because some guy goes and shoots up his community college also bombed uh, the hell out of a uh, humanitarian hospital over in Afghanistan. That they even have to look into it to find out if it was their bombs is kind of frightening. I mean, if I was walking around with great big explosive things, I would be keeping real good track of what I did with them. <laughs> yeah. And they don't seem to seem to think that this is important. Well, they can't say why it happened either, even, even if it's clearly their bombs, but they can't particularly say why. What happened? Oh, sorry about that. I mean, when you're dropping bombs, ultimately you're going to drop them in the wrong place at some point. This yeah. is one of the reasons you should be really careful about dropping bombs, but it seems like they're really into that bomb dropping thing. Uh, yeah, although uh, somehow Russia has managed, they claim, to do more damage to ISIS in one day than we did in a year. So what are they doing with all these bombs? Do they have any strategy or sense of what they're about? I would be very, very careful to uh, suggest that uh, somehow the uh, the Russian military is in any way more efficient than the United States. That's what I think a lot of people that really want to get us into wars are, are saying. They're mm -hmm. like, how come the Russians are better at this military stuff than we are? We're the U.S. of A. We've got so much more spending going on than the uh, the Russians, and um, they got boots on the ground. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I imagine they're doing something, but... I, I want nothing to do with that stuff. Let oh, yeah. Russia play around in the Middle East if that's what they want oh, to do. Oh, absolutely. I think Obama just doesn't want to bomb his own terrorists. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Get your Plenty card at Exxon or Mobile and start earning points at lots of places. So I get points for filling up at Exxon? You sure do. What about getting coffee at Mobile? Points. Streaming TV shows on Hulu? Definitely. Points on my AT&T wireless bill? Yep. Buying soap? At Rite Aid. Buying you a birthday present? Points at Macy's. Visiting your parents? No. You get marriage points. Oh. Exxon and Mobile are the only fuel brands that are part of Plenty, the rewards program that lets you earn points at one place and use them at another. Join Plenty for free through a participating Exxon or Mobile station today. Terms and limitations apply. See Plenty.com slash partners for details. Flu season starts with all kinds of symptoms. At Walmart, we can help you be prepared before they show up with products like Mucinex to help relieve chest congestion. 
and Delsum to help silence coughs for 12 hours. You'll also want to be ready with Sudafed PE to relieve sinus congestion and pressure, and Motrin for body aches and to reduce fever. So don't wait until the symptoms have already started. Be prepared for flu season this year. Stock up on everything you need at Walmart. Use all products as directed. Hi, this is Walt Augustinowitz. I'm the founder and CEO of ID Stronghold. By now you've heard our commercials about wallets that protect you from electronic pickpocketing. Ten years ago, I created a way to protect my own cards from prying eyes after government officials started talking about issuing a national ID card with a built-in radio chip called RFID. I felt having to broadcast my personal information was an invasion of privacy. Soon after, it was also announced that credit cards, debit cards, U.S. passports, hotel room keys, and even transit passes would all soon incorporate RFID. It was then I formed ID Stronghold to share my inventions in blocking RFID signals with the world. There are a lot of misconceptions out there today about RFID. I encourage everyone to get informed and get protected. Please go to idstronghold.com and get the facts and the wallet, sleeves, or badge holders you need to protect your personal financial data. You'll be pleasantly surprised that through our direct sales model, you won't pay more than other comparable unprotected wallets. It is as though the protection is free. Visit idstronghold.com today. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. SWCPoker.eu is Bitcoin Poker 2.0, where players can buy chips, play, and cash out anonymously with Bitcoin. No banking, just Bitcoin. Texas Hold'em, Omaha Hold'em, Draw, and many new games, including Chinese Poker. SWC Poker gladly accepts players worldwide, and over 2 million hands of Bitcoin Poker have been dealt at SWCPoker.eu. Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust. SWCPoker.eu. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, live Sunday edition. It's Mark with you. Rich Paul. And you can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind that's kind of what we do here on Free Talk Live, but we do bring show prep in, and I thought it was kind of important to point out that, well, the United States government has uh, recently bombed a humanitarian hospital in the Middle East. At the same time, the leader of this uh, organization, Barack Obama, is, I, I don't know for sure, let's call it ostensibly, demanding that your gun rights be restricted. You, who have not recently bombed a humanitarian hospital. <laughs> you, who have not gone in and shot up a uh, public university, uh, I should say college, that's a community college, college mm. uni university is uh, more than four years, college is four years kind of thing. Uh, and a community college is frequently two years. Two, yeah. So you, who have not shot up your, your, your friends and neighbors in a classroom, you should have your gun rights restricted. It should be harder for you to get a weapon. It just amazes me how the government can fail its way to success. Nobody even questions it. Smart, productive people 
across the planet, because this isn't just the United States government we're talking about here, having problems with productivity and efficiency. Mm. This is all of them. This is the model of the state. This is what happens when you give people a monopoly. The people unquestionably uh, believe that the, well, you know, government should take care of this thing or that thing or all these things. And I got to say, when a guy goes into a university where he had gone to school, excuse me, I should say uh, community college, where he had gone to school for at least some period of time. So these people had some kind of knowledge of what this guy was like. Um, you know, he goes and does his thing, shoots the place up, kills a bunch of people. Uh, apparently had a vin- real vendetta for Christians, which is an interesting part of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he, you know, he also went 13 years to the government school. They didn't figure out in that amount of time that uh, for some reason they needed to prevent him from getting guns because he legally obtained the, you know, the guns that he has. He was com- completely above board, as I understand it, went in and killed 10 people or whatever he did. And then um, because he did this, we have to have a conversation about how we're going to take away your dr- your gun rights because mm-hmm. that's what this conversation seems to be about. Nobody's laying on the table, you know, what a good solution to this would be is, is if everybody got a gun. Well, I'll tell you, the, we are at the Church of the Invisible <laughs> Hand. We actually are starting, uh, we want to make one more gun-free zone. We want to make the White House a gun-free zone and disarm Obama's security until such time as he and the Congress have repealed every unconstitutional gun control law. It's a good point that the people that, um, you know, the, these people that advocate for your gun rights to be taken away, have lots of people with guns hanging around them to protect them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Pope uh, made a statement that anybody who uh, invests in firearms should not consider themselves a Christian. And I saw a great picture of the... uh, of the monogrammed Swiss guard guns mm-hmm. that his guards use. So I guess, Pope, uh, if you're going to still call yourself a Christian, why don't you call in to Free Talk Live and explain why? It's my understanding. Um, so I posted something like that, and it was uh, there were some people that were very upset about the post. The claim is, and I didn't spend a lot of time listening to what the Pope says. I'd, I've listened to enough statists in my life. I don't have to go listening to more. But mm-hmm. one of the that the claim of these folks that disputed this meme that I put up, which was uh, the Pope in a Pope mobile with a guy with a gun, 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 like little arrows pointing around, the guys with guns running along the side of the Pope mobile. Oh, I saw that one. I didn't yeah. know it was you. It was a good one. And the dispute was is that he was being very clear that he was talking about sort of gun traffickers. Um, now I don't know who gets guns to people who need them besides pe- you know a gun trafficker, you know, gun manufacturers, these people, but um, nonetheless that this was the this was the fine print below the quote that was apparently taken out of context. I don't know. Yeah, well, he also talked about investors, and, you know, there's no stock market for illegal gun traffickers. So if he's talking about investors, he must be talking about investors and legal legal uh, gun, gun companies. Yeah. So I would say he's pretty much a liar on that. Well, um, that's but he didn't post on my Facebook page. I, only uh, supporters. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I wish I he think had. His supporter was wrong. I would think. I would. I wonder how many likes the Pope would get if he posted on our Facebook page. It'd probably drive a lot of traffic. It really would. We've had as many as eighteen million uh, post views in a in a given week um, on Free Talk Live. But that's a pretty good week. Uh, I think. Imagine it'd be even better if the Pope just decided to post on uh, one of our things. He doesn't need to. Plenty of lackeys. Mm-hmm. Now, what week was it that you hit 18 million? What was it's going on? It's been some time. I don't We had a couple of good memes that were really riding, plus uh, a video. There was a video of, uh, I can't remember, the, the, the Gil Fulbright, uh, this politician, fake politician um, that was, you know, um, doing a fake uh, political ad. And here's a picture of me pointing. Here's a picture of me patting some kids on the head. You know, like it just <laughs> it's an amusing bit. And uh, re- there was recently one out, um, uh, another one, a follow-up to it. So it was uh, very clever videos, and you should keep an eye out for them. Oh, yeah. So nonetheless, the Doctors Without Borders Hospital, I'm going to continue to read here. The main central hospital building housing the intensive care unit, emergency rooms, physiotherapy ward was repeatedly hit by very precise um, hit very precisely during each aerial raid, while surrounding buildings were left mostly untouched. 
well, it's good to know their friendly fire is accurate. Yeah, this is the, the, whatever they're doing, they've got some bad intel. Doctors Without Borders adds the bombing took place despite the fact that the Doctors Without Borders had provided the GPS coordinates of the trauma hospital to coalition and Afghan military and civilian officials to avoid the hospital being hit. As a routine practice for Doctors Without Borders in conflict areas, um, they had uh, communicated the exact location of the hospital to all parties in the conflict. To make matters worse, the hospital already overwhelmed with a number of patients from recent fighting in Kunduz, was, uh, which was uh, seized on Monday by the Taliban. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul expressed condolences but did not apologize for the attack. Kind of strange. Well, both the UN mission, I mean, if you're going to express condolences, why not just say, sorry about that? Well, both the UN mission to Afghanistan and the Red Cross condemned the strike, saying it was unacceptable to undermine humanitarian organizations in the war zone. I don't imagine that the U.S. intentionally bombed Doctors Without Borders. I could be wrong. Well, you never know. Maybe somebody there had a secret. I I, I don't know. It seems it's it seems uh, ridiculous, but you never know. I mean, there's a, even even if you get an apology and saying it was a mistake, you still never know why it was done. I mean, yeah. there's plenty been been plenty of uh, enlisted men that have apologized for shooting their officer. Oops, sorry about that. Heat of the battle. Yeah, and you never know. This attack was abhorrent. And a grave violation of international humanitarian law, we demand total transparency from coalition forces, said uh, Mini Nikoli, that's the president of Doctors Without Borders. Besides resulting in the deaths of our colleagues and patients, this attack was cut, has cut off access to urgent trauma care for the population of Kunduz at a uh, time when its services are most needed. Hmm. Now, I don't think anybody's all for this, right? Like Nobody's like, yeah, Doctors Without Borders got bombed. Just remember, this is the organization that wants to manage your gun rights. Mm. The same conversation going on at the same time this week. I, They can't manage bombs. <laughs> Precise bombs. Don't you want to be able to have a gun if, they're bo- if they start bombing hospitals here? No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Money, power, and respect are all yours at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $22 higher at $1,136 per ounce, and silver is $0.52 cents higher at $15.06 per ounce. It looks like precious metals have finally made the split from the stock market. We have plenty of Australian silver spiders and kangaroos in stock. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. 
LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. The number is 603. Excuse me, that's our studio line. I can give it to you, but it doesn't really matter. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Sunday night edition. It's Mark with you. Rich Paul. Ian is away at an ACLU dinner. Apparently they invited him for something. It's an award dinner of some sort. I'm not entirely certain what's going on there. You can call in. What we're talking about here is is this uh, bombing of a Doctors Without Borders hospital in Afghanistan. If you want to save on pretty much everything that you buy in life, I've got a little news for you. You can go to saveatpurse.com. That's saveatpurse.com. To get 15, 20, 25, 30, sometimes even more. Um, we, My house recently had a purchase go at 40% off. Now, it's not complete yet, so I can't say, you know, it's all done. But uh, it, it takes a little longer. It takes a little longer. It takes a little planning. But you know that you're going to buy certain things in life, and you can wait if you're for a, for a savings. Save at purse.com. The trick is you're going to have to use Bitcoin. Now, um, we recently had a Bitcoin advertiser Sadly, it doesn't look like they're going to uh, continue. I don't think they're going to continue, period, not just advertising. I, I think that they, uh, they got kind of regulated out of business. But nonetheless, um, you if you can get some Bitcoins, you go to saveatpurse.com to use them. They actually sell them there, but they sell them at a uh, price increase. So saveatpurse.com. That's saveatpurse.com. Let's go to Dana calling in from Michigan. Dana, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. I don't know which one of you just said it in the last segment, but someone said about, stated the hypocrisy of this administration who bombs a hospital but wants to take away your gun rights. Well, shame on both of you. Don't you guys realize after all almost eight years of this guy, hypocrisy is allowed, in fact, even encouraged on the left. It's part of their dogma. Don't do as I do, do as I say. And as far as the Pope, I am a Roman Catholic. This is the same Pope. You shouldn't be surprised of his hypocrisy. He had some kind of a consortium this summer and disallowed, barred anyone who did not purport to believe in global warming. So these People on the left, including the Pope, who is supposed to be a man of God and saving souls as a Roman Catholic, I'll tell you guys something. The Catholic Church is bleeding Catholic, and this guy is doing Catholicism no great favor. So between he and Obama, neither one of you should be surprised. 
And when I say shame on you, of course I'm saying that tongue in cheek. That's fine. You make an exciting radio show, uh, Dana, and I won't have a problem with it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, you know, I I, kind of wonder about this pope. He gets more press than any pope in my Mm -hmm. lifetime. Obviously, John Paul is, uh, you know, the majority of my lifetime, uh, at least, you know, that I was cognizant. Um, so, I mean, I would think that that's good for the church, just getting the, the press being sort of relevant and out there, but he seems to be driving away a certain percentage of, um, Roman Catholics, uh, with his, his rhetoric. I got to say he's rhetorically helpful to me because, you know, I'm forming my own church, I'm writing my own theology, and a, co- and a common criticism is, hey, Rich Paul, you're just making this up as you go along. And I say, well, so is Pope Francis. He's diametrically opposed to everything the Catholic Church has ever believed. <laughs> I think he's still into the Jesus thing, but I'm not certain he didn't mention it to Congress. <laughs> right. You guys are... You're right on. Both of you are. And I stumbled across an article, and believe me, when I say stumbled, I really had a dig. I wasn't looking for it. I was looking for something else. There is, and this isn't out there. This isn't being talked about. There is incredible turmoil in Rome because of what he is doing and the conservative faction in, in the, you know, that is right there around, that surrounds him, you know, the higher up, the cardinals. Because he is going places he has no business being into. He's supposed to be saving souls, not the damn planet. Leave that to everyone else. There's a couple of weird things about this pope also. The pope before him, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm sure you watch the Catholic Church more closely than I do, but he stepped down, which is something that hasn't happened before. Um, And then... I'm just not understanding, was there some sort of political sea change in the College of Cardinals who elected this pope? Is, uh, was there a lot of personnel change there that, that, you know... Yes, there was. Okay, so... some good. There was a lot of corruption. All the bankers that, that, um, that, uh, were controlling the Vatican Bank and have for centuries were all Italian. And um, and he got rid of all of them. He cleaned house. That was a very good thing because there was incredible corruption going on. But, you know, with this nonsense, the problems he's causing is, okay, so he's telling America we need to take in all these refugees. And how many has he taken in? Again, I'm a devout Catholic, but just like our government, I love my country, but there are bad people that run it, you know? And same with the Pope. We look at our history. We have not had, uh, you know, a brilliant history. We've had bad Popes. The thing I don't like is if you are so concerned about all these refugees and you're pointing your finger at America, sticking your nose in our business, telling us who we should take in and who we should house, then how come you aren't selling that precious, priceless artwork to take care of all these people? Artwork that is only seen by the eyes of the Pope and the Cardinals and certain who's who in the world. With I did go through the Vatican, and it is amazing the stuff they have there. Obviously, you saw the Sistine Chapel, it but incredible. just it's it, the the place is you know square footage wise the most valuable place on the planet. Um, it's a med- mm. amazing the amount of uh, property they have there. Yeah, but and this I, guy is then, and and I hate to switch topics, but then he's pushing socialism. Okay, now. Like I say, I'm not a Christian, but as I recall, the quote from Jesus was, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. There was nothing about passing a law to force your neighbor to sell all that he has and give it to the poor. So I would say, I would echo your question about his uh, socialist views that maybe he should liquidate that golden throne of his and some of that artwork, as you point out, and he should start giving that that to the poor because uh, C.S. Lewis says that it is not groups but individuals that are saved or damned. Exactly. And you know what? After the comments you made about uh, socialism and and he's telling everyone else to sell what they have, but he's not selling his own, why don't you run for some public office? Because we need people like yourself who have their heads screwed on straight. 
See, that's another dogma of the left, that don't do as I do. I can ride around in my $40,000 Prius, but I'm going to dictate to you guys what you can and cannot do. And you're going to give all you have to everyone else. So you that forty thousand right dollar Prius track. is sweet too. Yeah. Uh, we went and looked at it, uh, my <laughs> wife and I, when I uh, when we got the thirty thousand dollar Prius, uh, which uh, she's still paying on. And uh, man, that forty thousand dollar one's nice. It uh, it's got really got the but, good stuff but in Mark, it. Mark, I don't hear you preaching. You don't tell others. The reason that I got the Prius. Uh, the reason I pushed for the Prius is, is that uh, I wanted to reduce the amount of fossil fuels, specifically gasoline, because diesel fuel and those sorts of things can be easily taken from shale oil like they have here in the North American continent. I wanted to uh, decrease my family's footprint on foreign oil, specifically Middle East oil, because, well, they kill people over that stuff, and I just don't want to be involved right. in it. Exactly. Thanks so much, but Dana. I, but I like but you guys present it a different way. You do what you have to. If all of us took personal responsibility, I don't have a problem with that. But don't you dare thump your finger in my chest and tell me I can, I can, I can. And what I have to give up while you sit in your wealthy homes and drive, you know, your, your fly in your private jets all over the place. That, I, I have no tolerance for that kind of nonsense. Thank you. So, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Want gold but also want to stay digital and decentralized on the Bitcoin blockchain? Anthem Vault, providing trusted, world-class vaulting, has your answer with Hayek Gold. Digital, spendable gold inspired by economist and free market philosopher F.A. Hayek. Each Hayek is worth one gram of gold and is available right now at AnthemVault.com. Sign up today at AnthemVault.com with promo code FREEDOM to earn six months of free storage and 5% off all margins for life. Hayek Gold at AnthemVault.com. Get yours today. This is Sharon Hunt. Before using heart and body extract, my energy level was very, very low. I could only walk a few feet and then would have to sit down. I was tired and lethargic. But after taking heart and body extract, my energy level has improved greatly, and I can now walk longer distances without getting tired so fast. Thank you, heart and body extract. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always-on reliability. Their nerds know business and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work.it slash FTL. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Yeah! Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. Talking about the Doctors Without Borders hospital that was bombed by the United States government, apparently, uh, just uh, just a few, not that many hours ago, frankly, um, and been kind of across the board. Uh, but I think what's interesting is, is that the United States government is this organization, and frankly, all governments. I mean, this is a, this is an organizational model that claims to be a monopoly. There's really only one monopoly. And that is the state, because it simply finds other governing organizations that are more powerful than it to be abhorrent or equal. They claim equal power to it to be abhorrent. And it's, you know, you'll find you'll find them fighting each other. Sometimes it's wars, sometimes it's in uh, courtrooms, but they they really just don't get along because they don't like the idea that there's competition for you and your property and your hard work and all these things. We were talking about the Syrian refugees. By the way, it's Mark with you. And Rich Paul. We were talking about the Syrian refugees in the last segment, and I, I we haven't had much chance to, uh, to talk about it, but I've done a little bit of looking into these Syrian refugees. Now, first off, what you need to understand is these folks are not your average sort of sheep uh, shepherd in the hills of Afghanistan or something. These people lived in cities and they um, had jobs and, you know, much more westernized than your, uh, you know, average, uh, you know, person from some sort of, you know, fourth world country or whatever it is, highly undeveloped country, much more developed country than uh, most in the Middle East. These folks um, wanting to get away from the war torn uh, state that they're in, that makes perfectly good sense. Anybody would want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people sort of uh, a picture of like a really buff like muscle bound Syrian guy. And these are the poor defenseless Syrian refugees that uh, are trying to get into Europe. You know, like there's, you know, pointing out that this big buff guy, mm -hmm. um, you know, whose body will absorb a bullet in about the same manner that yours will, right. who is it not bulletproof, uh, you know, wants to live someplace where he's relatively safe. I see no problem with that. What I see a problem with is, is that um, in this country, we have all kinds of rules about, um, you know, the status of refugees. So first off, refugees get a great deal of more, um, you know, going over than sort of anybody else who comes to the country. You get a student visa or whatever, you're not going to be checked on nearly as much as a refugee. I believe the guys who did the 9-11 thing uh, were all uh, student, had student visas. So, mm -hmm. you know, these people were in the country legally in many cases. Mm -hmm. Um so the refugees get a great deal of checks to make sure that they're the right folks and, and everything like that. I do, as I do understand, there are some changes going on that's going to make these uh, maybe perhaps less rigorous, give uh, more latitude to uh, DHS to uh, let folks in, whatever. I think the worst part is, is that a refugee immediately becomes eligible for welfare assistance. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So there, in what I find, uh, you know, not, I'm not, I don't know what that means, but that this, it's the welfare assistance that upsets people so much. When you're mm -hmm. talking about Americans not doing as well as they were, say, five years ago, 
mm-hmm. being asked to give money to people, it upsets them. It's like, hey, mm-hmm. who are, are they working as hard as I am? Are they doing as poorly as I am? Because I'm struggling. And that it's upsetting to people. Now, when you're talking about giving it to people from outside the country, they get <laughs> they get even more upset. Mm-hmm. I don't see any particular reason for that. You know, why is mm-hmm. it that I should be obliged to take care of somebody who's living in Poughkeepsie, New York, but mm-hmm. not obliged to take care of somebody who's from Syria? I don't know. You know, why? What what is this geographic reason uh, that people have? But from a pl- political standpoint, you're going to get people very upset. Mm-hmm. Now, the Syrians likely would come to whatever country they go to. They're going to be a big asset. One of the reasons Germany is trying to snatch them up, mm-hmm. um, they're going to be an asset and they're going to be um, you know, beneficial where they are. But I, th- I can see why people are like, they're going to be on welfare. They're just going to be a drain. I, I get the point. If, if I imagine many of them would say, hey, just let me come in. I won't take a penny of your welfare. There sh- that should be mm-hmm. an option. And if it's not an option, well, that's a problem with our uh, you know, rules for refugee status not a problem with the refugees themselves. Yeah, there there are strange things about this particular group of refugee, uh, or at least I have seen reports that there are strange things about them. For example, uh, the pictures that I've seen of Europe were almost exclusively male. So one of the interesting things is that they seem to be bringing a very limited number of women and children with them, at least into Europe. And I don't know what sort of refugee leaves his wife and children when he leaves. So that is something that that has made me wonder, and I'm not normally a xenophobic person, uh, but it has made me wonder what exactly are they up to. Maybe um, I'm just thinking it would here. be very easy uh, if you're if you've got a million refugees crossing the border into Europe, it would be very easy to slip in ten thousand people with ill intent and hide them in that group. And they could cause a great deal of havoc, especially in a helpless and disarmed country like France or Germany. Like all of Um, them in Europe. You know, I mean, they're not helpless militarily, but their people are helpless. Sure. Um, The people are the... The, the people are what's going to protect your uh, nation in, in an invasion. Yeah, you can look at the difference between the attack in France where they uh, uh, killed the people at the magazine and then they killed the cop compared to what Hebdo. happened in Texas where they showed up to, to kill some people and instead the people they showed up to kill killed them. You know, that's an option in America, but it's not in most of Europe. Uh, Switzerland, the most peaceful company, country in Europe, is the exception to that, of course. It was, I understand it's difficult to get a, a gun for uh, personal protection in Switzerland, but a lot of people do have them. And My it has one of the highest. is that when they left, when their military service, which is mandatory there, ended, that they were expected to take the rifle home with them. That may have changed. Yeah, I think that you can get the rifle, and a lot of people do, but one of the reasons that they have the rifle is basically to protect the country. It's more of a patriotic uh-huh. thing than anything else also the um weapon the ammo for that rifle is generally kept in an armory in a centralized location however many of them have uh, rifles for hunting and things like that so the a rifle mm-hmm. a hunting rifle will kill you just as dead as an, an ar-15 and do just as well for defense yep. uh, as a matter of fact the ar-15 is basically a, a hunting rifle they call it an assault weapon to make it sound like an ar-15 and an m16 are the same well i'll tell you i've fired an ar-15 and i've fired an m16 there's a great big difference what's the difference the the difference is that with an m16 when you pull that trigger once you get a stream of bullets until you stop with an ar-15 one trigger pull is one bullet you can set an m16 for a uh you know semi-automatic you can set an m16 to semi-automatic but you cannot set a uh, AR-15 to uh, full automatic. So let's, let's go that's to Ron. a huge difference. Let's go to Ron calling in Virginia. Ron, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, is Mark Edge there? I was talking about a uh, extortionate means used on me in the state of Florida in order to cover up the fact that they denied me legal counsel. And it's been going on for 11 years, and I'm contacting the attorney general 
uh, Pam Bondi in the state of Florida, and also uh, Rick Scott as well. I'm going to be sending them a letter. Uh, what basically How's that happened, going for you? <laughs> it's called stonewalling. Okay. You see, basically what they've done is, uh, you see, I was, my sister uh, basically extorted several, not embezzled several million dollars from my father. And oh, I my. caught her and I said, hey, because she's, did you say my or what? I said, oh my. I've got about, I've oh got my, about 45 oh, yeah. seconds here, Ron. Oh, yeah. Wrap it up for me. I've got about 45 seconds. You, oh, you mean you're coming on a hard break. That's correct. Okay, well, I'm going to send you folks some documentation if Mark Edge is still there. That's because me. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake, rattle, and roll this thing and make the people in Florida. This is a crime. And what, what are they, they doing to you? Did. What are they doing to me? They set a what's called a public record on me that keeps me from buying a firearm and also getting a decent job from all of the experience I've had in my life. I've had a lot of life experience that gives me uh, a, the the tools in doing a job that I can do. What what For does example, this letter I do? Great. I mean, I've got a felony. It doesn't keep me from getting a job. No, you you don't understand. I have I was Baker acted and also a domestic violence complaint made against me by mm. my sister. I see. That keeps me from acquiring a firearm, and also it keeps me from getting certain federal jobs. I was in the military. And I have certain expertise in the military, and that gives me the ability to do certain things so the federal government gets paid well. Best of luck, Ron. Let us know how it goes. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logoed apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keenan the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, October 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $241. Antiwar.com reports the Pentagon promised an investigation on Saturday after it was revealed that an AC-130 warplane carried out sustained fire against a Doctors Without Borders run hospital on the outskirts of the Taliban held city of Kunduz, killing 19, including 12 staffers and three children. The hospital was already overwhelmed by the huge number of casualties from the past week of fighting over Kunduz, which the Taliban seized on Monday. Doctors Without Borders is demanding clarification on what happened 
and noting they contacted the U.S. after the first strike near the hospital to warn them it was so close and sustained attacks against the hospital continued for over 30 minutes. After that, the U.S. Embassy in Kabul expressed condolences but did not apologize for the attack, while both the U.N. mission to Afghanistan and the Red Cross condemned the strikes, saying it was unacceptable to undermine humanitarian organizations in the war zone. Though Doctors Without Borders reported 19 dead and 37 injured as a preliminary toll, they added that 30 other people were unaccounted for, meaning the tolls will almost certainly rise in the hours to come. This is not the first time the U.S. has come under fire for its actions against hospitals in Afghanistan, though it is by far the biggest such incident. Back in 2009, there were a pair of incidents, including one in which U.S. ground troops attacked a hospital, forcing their way in and tying up the staff before smashing up the place. That hospital was run by the charity group, the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports many of Illinois' medical cannabis cultivation centers are harvesting their first medicinal cannabis crops this weekend. The 75,000-square-foot cultivation center in Barrie, Illinois, the biggest in the state, is already preparing its first shipment to patients. The center is one of two owned and managed by Revolution Enterprises. The state's medical cannabis law took effect on January 1, 2014, making Illinois the 20th state to approve the use of cannabis for specific medical conditions. Medical cannabis products will soon be available in dispensaries around the state. Tim McGraw, CEO of Revolution Enterprises, said the new industry will be a boon to the economy and to patients who need relief. The list of conditions approved for medical cannabis include debilitating conditions and diseases like cancer and AIDS, but does not include chronic pain or post-traumatic stress disorder, something McGraw hopes will soon change. On Wednesday, politicians and veterans met in Barrie to discuss the possibility of adding PTSD to the list of approved conditions. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot FPP Radio dot com. Reuters reports as Germany celebrated 25 years since reunification on Saturday, President Joachim Gauck said Europe's refugee crisis posed a greater challenge to the country than the welding together of Western Germany and the former Communist East. Gauck, a former Lutheran pastor from East Germany who played a prominent role in the peaceful protests that led to the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, said the two halves of the country had become one over the past quarter of a century. Back then, West Germans cheered and clapped their Eastern peers as they crossed the border that had separated them for decades. Gawk, who has a largely ceremonial role but is considered a moral authority for the nation, warned that integrating refugees with different religions and cultures would be much rougher than uniting Germans who shared the same language, national culture, and history even during their separation. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after Seattle area consulting firm Brink and Tiller received a resume from Corey Wilhelm, a college graduate with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Communications, Human Resources Director Robert Bradshaw immediately fast-tracked Wilhelm's application and spoke with The Onion about this exceptional candidate. Well, the second I saw Corey's resume, I knew I had to send it straight up to our CEO. I mean, we're talking about an applicant who not only got into the University of Washington School of Communication, but also managed to graduate in four years with a Bachelor of Arts. This kid's only 22, but according to his resume, he already has experience in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. 
We're really going to have to move fast to get this guy. Bradshaw went on to say that company heads could barely believe the candidate had two years of experience working at his college newspaper and had even taken a full four years of high school Spanish. Since receiving the application, Bradshaw claims the company has made numerous attempts to reach Wilhelm. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever you want here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Sunday night, and it is Mark with you. And Rich Paul. We spent the first hour talking about, well, uh, the bombing that went on in um, Afghanistan of a humanitarian hospital, Doctors Without Borders, by the United States government, and sort of juxtaposing that against the uh, UCC shooter and how Barack Obama came out advocating essentially, he didn't say it, but he wants to have a national conversation about uh, you know gun violence and what that means. And Usually what that means, especially coming out of the de- uh, mouths of Democrats, is is that, well, they want to take away your gun rights, more of them. What we need is more checks. I was watching uh, Meet the Press this week, and you, that's exactly what the Democrats on Meet the Press were saying. Did they say who were writing those checks? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly it's the gun manufacturers, is it? Yeah. Uh. So, and, you know, it's not like I trust Republicans either. I'm just saying I've been around this game long enough to know what the players are going to say. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's pretty silly that an organization can fail its way to more managerial power because that's what they're asking for. The United States government is a service organization, uh, albeit a service organization with an uh, with a breathtaking brand loyalty. Um, The way people just, uh, you know, keep on wanting to turn more things over this organization that fails and fails and fails and fails and fails again. Mm-hmm. fails so utterly that they're bombing Doctors Without Borders and then saying you're not responsible to figure out whether or not you should have a gun. They can't handle a smart bomb. They're too dumb for smart bombs. <laughs> Maybe they should let the bombs run the show. <laughs> We'd be better off. If they just get the politicians out of there and let the bombs uh, vote because they won't vote for anything. Nothing is better than what we've got. That's um, what makes me an anarchist. <laughs> Nothing's better than what we've got. <laughs> well, I I think that that uh, that that term's bombastic, but um, I do uh, I, I have some understanding of uh, anarchist thought, and eh, you know, there's some good writers in there, some interesting stuff. Mm. Well, you can handle my bombast, but don't let me get started on blank verse. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> bombast and blank verse. It's a phrase from Shakespeare. I got you. <laughs> you do you, you do like to quote Shakespeare. So um, I've got another article here from the Free Thought Project. Apparently in Bronx, New York, a mother is regretting the decision to call police to help her find her son uh, last year after um, their visit landed the 24-year-old nonverbal autistic man in the hospital. Anna Baltazar, mother of Miguel Torrella, called 911 last year after her son went missing. Within the hour, the police had uh, found Torrella. Uh, however, lacking the training and subsequent competence to deal with a nonverbal autistic person, the NYPD used the only resource they have to handle the situation violence. We're about to shoot him for his own protection. <laughs> When the police found him, he was uh, scared, lost, walking down the street. Tor- uh, Torella was unable to communicate with the officers, apparently enraged, inability to uh, communicate with them, enraged them, and so one officer resorted to his taser. The police encountered Miguel on the street. He was lost. He can't communicate. They interpreted uh, this as him being uncooperative, and they tasered him in order to bring him into custody. I want you to imagine what it might be like if you're, uh, you know, dealing with a, a nonverbal autistic person and, you know, that person doesn't have the same uh, nuance, doesn't understand the nuances of modern society, right? Like, you're not allowed to pull away from one of the, a guy with one of these uh, silly uniforms and the dumb hats with the sort of eight sides on them. Mm-hmm. Um, if the, the, you know, what if Miguel was treating these people like, strangers 
<laughs> which is what they were ultimately, right? They have mm. a uniform that sort of suggests that they are not the same sort of stranger that other strangers are. Yeah, I don't generally start when I see f strangers and think about going somewhere else, but when I see a police uniform, I do. <laughs> the um, So with this guy, I... I can imagine it's frustrating for the police officer. It frustrates me. It frustrates anybody dealing with, uh, you know, people that are in these conditions. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. The taser doesn't help. You have, so far, as I understand it, we have never managed to scare the bejesus out of a uh, crazy person and make them act sane. It just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know? This is one thing I tell my wife when she gets frustrated with me and it treats me like I'm a uh, like I'm a dummy. You know, dumb people still don't appreciate it being treated like stupid people. Like dumb mm. people don't like it. Whether or not it's true, you don't get dumb people to be smart by treating them as though they are dumb. And so this is I, whether is whether this. Of course, is, you don't get dumb people to be smart by treating them like they're smart either. No, you, you don't. You can't it's, fix stupid. You, you really can't. <laughs> Ultimately, if you're dealing with a stupid person, you either need to learn patience or leave. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing that should be pointed out is is that there's all different types of intelligence, and um, that uh, you know that b people who are not so great at one thing may be really great at another. My wife is that never ceases. 172 needles. <laughs> What's that mean? Uh, did he see Rain Man? Yeah, was it? it one he would count counting? anything yeah. that he dropped. He was really good at something. At some things. <laughs> well, my wife is frustrated that I can't find things in the kitchen. I literally attempt not to know where things are in the kitchen, just because. Well, she moves them. This, mm. At some point or another, she's going to change where she puts these things. So why should I learn where they are now? Nonetheless, this frust frustrates her to no end, and then she gets all upset. Um, and I think that this is a reasonable comparison to what it might be like for police dealing with this guy with uh, autism. And what they ended up doing is just tasering him to the point that he ended up in the hospital, and they called Mama and said, hey, come get your kid. We found him for you. Tasered him and put him in the hospital. <laughs> now, it seems... I shot your dog so we could bring him home easy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, in the, he's in the trunk. The you know thanks for all your help, gentlemen. One of the problems is, is you're dealing with bureaucracy, right? Like you call nine one one, you tell the nine one one operator, my um, nonverbal autistic son has gone missing. Please tell the police to be on the lookout for him. Tell us where he is, and we will come get him for you, so that you don't have to deal with him. We just want to know where he is. And then of course the police are sent. You got a nonverbal autistic, might be dangerous, running around Bronx. Go get him. And then they don't say anything about the parents or anything like that. So I'd say that you're lucky that uh, the kid's alive at all um, mm. after the, the run-in with the police. But I, I, this is it's sadly what more and more people are learning around, uh, around the United States and perhaps around the world, that the police are just bad people to deal with certain problems. If you've got a mental health issue, that maybe... Maybe it's not a good idea to call the police. No, you're better off slinking off into the woods until you get a hold of yourself. <laughs> could, be a, could be a long time for a lot of folks. I don't imagine this kid's going to be a particularly high-functioning, even uh, with a, a five yeah, years well, in the woods. at least you won't get tased in the woods. <laughs> Let's talk to Matthew calling in from Arizona. Matthew, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi. What's Can on you hear your, me? Yeah, yep. What's on your mind, Matthew? Hey, uh, the other day I was leaving the airport after renting a car with a buddy of mine. Okay. And there was like a sheriff department vehicle there. And okay. he followed me because, you know, my buddy has a, you know, windowless white construction van. No, oh, yeah. Really very typically a sketchy vehicle. Yeah. yeah. I get, I bet he gets a lot of uh, jokes from friends, uh, the pedophile van, that sort of thing. Right. In including me. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's one of those types of vans. You know, sadly, a man. It's very difficult for a man to drive a van as sort of a primary mode of transportation, um, uh, without being just considered a weirdo. I don't know why it is. It's just a van. Yeah. But anyway, I start driving down the road, and the sheriff department vehicle follows me. Uh huh. And he never pulls me over, but you know, I see people well speeding over the speed limit, and they blow past me, but he's still following only me. Hmm. And How'd they make you feel? I into a gas station. Oh, definitely intimidated. I've always been very intimidated by police. 
So you're going to pull into a gas station. I want to hear what happens next, Matthew. Okay. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in about anything you want. But have you had a dealing with a mental health issue with law enforcement? I'd like to hear your story. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Money, power, and respect are all yours at credit successsecretsrevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine. So you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Seniors thunder into a local high school parking lot like coalition forces entering Baghdad. A substitute teacher just needs to make it to her car before breaking down in tears. And a college freshman tells his roommate there's no need to hide his masturbation from him. And now a week in review that truly requires no introduction. The nation's students announced this week that they have reluctantly agreed to give the American education system yet another chance, saying they hope educators keep their promises of smaller class size, better school supplies, and intensified efforts to raise the country's international math ranking. The nation's students vowed to give the education system one more shot, despite claiming to have been burned many, many times in the past. In other news, a man overcomes alcoholism without the help of Jesus, and an outcast student and a lonely teacher have begun a somewhat endearing sexual relationship. And that was a free lesson in top-shelf journalism. For more news, videos, and reminders of your insignificance, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Blake Develop. Development.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. Talking about the situation where, well... Family calls the police to help find their nonverbal autistic son who's gone uh, 
kind of gotten away from the house. And what the, could go wrong? Yeah, right. The guy ends up tased in the hospital. I think that that's a pretty good result for some of these stories I've seen. Um, well, he survived. Yeah. If you want to have a little more privacy when you're online, if you care about your privacy, you need to get ProXPN. It's a virtual private network that encrypts all of your online data before it even gets to your internet service provider. ProXPN does it all right, offering OpenVPN, the gold standard of network encryption. They have apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, even Linux support. So setup's a cinch. Plus, unlike those other guys, ProXPN help, um, keeps no logs of your activities whatsoever. Now ProXPN has even more servers than ever before, giving you greater speed and security. They've um, also now integrated Nonkali.com to mask your emails. If you get a premium account, they um, accept credit card and even Bitcoin. You can get 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of an account when you buy an annual account with our code FTL50. It can end up being cheaper per month than a good cup of coffee. And now, to make the deal even better, if you use Bitcoin, you go to ProXPN.com slash AMP. And you pay with Bitcoin, you get two years of the ProXPN service for only forty nine ninety five. So five bucks of that goes to us in the AMP program to help Free Talk Live spread the ideas of liberty. It's a big savings for you, and but only if you pay for it with Bitcoin. You keep on hearing about our online privacy getting infringed. Well, go now to ProXPN.com. Use coupon code FTL50 to pay in cash or use Bitcoin at ProXPN.com slash AMP and take advantage of a new AMP offer. Help spread the ideas of liberty and take back your privacy. Returning to Matthew in Arizona, who uh, was picked up by picked up at the airport by a friend of his who happens to have a, a van, one of these vans that doesn't have a lot of windows in it. Suspicious. So he's mm. dri- leaving the... Uh, leaving the airport in the van and uh, cops following him. There's people speeding past and the police officers just on his tail. And Matt, you just pulled into a gas station. Yeah. So I pull into the gas station and the cop doesn't pull on his lights or anything, got to get out of his vehicle or anything, but he stays in his car. And so I turn off my car so I don't look suspicious. And, you know, I act like I'm, you know, checking my Facebook or doing whatever whatever you're doing. Oh, yeah, so that, you know, if you try saying, oh, well, you're pulling in just to, like, evade somewhere, you're like, oh, no, I got a, you know, text message, and I was doing the legal thing, got off the road, and, you know. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. You get a text message, and, you know, if you need to respond to it, you better pull off to the side of the road and get into a gas station. That's what we're told you're to do. Yeah, so after five minutes, he finally takes off and leaves, so I take off as well, and, you know, wait until he's out of sight and leave. And... I've just noticed, and I don't know if it's because I look like the quote-unquote stereotypical pothead. I've got shaggier hair, got a beard. I even have like a little Rasta Yamka that I wear. (laughs) But it's not just in Arizona that I've gotten pulled over like this. I've gotten pulled over in Michigan as well. And like, I know you're not supposed to profile, or the cops aren't supposed to profile, but it's definitely become like very prominent. Like I've never actually gotten a ticket in my life. Like I said, I'm extremely fo- I have like super afraid of cops because I don't want to get you know shot just for speeding. So, like I I don't even know like what to do to try and avoid these situations anymore because I'm getting pulled over you know every six months or so. Oh, you know I followed you for 15 miles and you touched the middle line three times. Are you drunk? <laughs> Like, I, that was literally one of the excuses I got one time when I was pulled over. Yeah. Well, I mean, I if, if you want my advice, it's going to sound very uh, biased. My advice would be, look, I'm a convicted felon and the worst kind of convicted felon. I'm a convicted murderer and I don't have tro- problems with the police at all. It's because I have a short cropped haircut and... I, you know, I just, I don't have that look of somebody that they're going to want to have to give a problem to. I do- drive a Prius, uh, or my wife's Prius. If not, I'm in the F350. Uh, but, um, you know, either way, eh, it's unlikely this guy is going to be uh, an issue. Do cops profile? You're darn right. Human beings profile. Um, it would be foolish for them not to profile. I'm don't think that it's, you know, it's just not that kind of world that we live in where people are not going to be profiled. If you want 
to, you know, if you want the benefits um, that there come that comes with sort of wearing the clothing of and uh, having the haircut of a you know middle class or upper middle class human being, you need to look like one. Um, if you want to go ahead and look like uh, you know but hippie or whatever, expect the police officers to treat you like one. Would be my my thoughts. Rich, do you have something that uh, might be nicer? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, to some extent, it depends on how you uh, carry yourself. Cops are predators, and they smell fear. Um, Isn't I, everybody scared of one? Scared of them ultimately? Well, I've I noticed a change. For example, when I was earning six figures, and I was working as a computer programmer, and I was driving around in the nicest car, I actually had hair down to my elbows. But they pretty much left me alone most of the time. And I think that was, uh, I think part of the reason is because I dealt with them with a lot more confidence then. If they wrote me a ticket, it wasn't going to, you know, severely harm my life. Whereas now, if they write me a ticket, well, I'm just not going to pay it. There was some study I saw, um, just speaking to what you're saying there, Rich, some study I saw that sort of looked at how men and women view, uh, you know, the type of car that people drive and what the results are. And I can't quote it off the top of my head exactly what it was. It had something to do with parking spaces and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But the idea was is that somehow or another men are more hierarchically conscious. They see who's they understand who's above them. They understand who's below them. I would guess that police officers are more likely to be male, and therefore um, you would be able to use that information to sort of uh, to your benefit if you understood it. So if you can communicate to the police officer that you are his social uh, peer uh, superior, then that would, in some cases, many cases, be of benefit to you. Um. I've I've found that 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 can be helpful. Like when I was first here in uh, in Keene, and people didn't know, you know, who I was or that I was an activist or anything. There was a time behind the Ministry of Propaganda when uh, a couple of friends of mine were sitting there, and they had a scale between them, and they had some weed in their pocket, and so if they'd gotten busted with the scale and the weed, it might have looked like they were selling, and you know, a cop had been called by a neighbor and told that we were smoking weed there. And when he showed up, I kind of went into suit mode, Yeah, you know, and I, you know, kind of the attitude I would have had at a board meeting or something. And so I just walk right up to him with my hand out. Hey, how you doing? Rich Paul, what can I do to help you? You know, and uh, refused to let him on the property, and he just kind of left because he didn't want to deal with me. Matt, I want to get your reaction to this. We've uh, talked you into the dirt. Hold on just a second, if you would, please. Okay. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live. What's the best way to deal with police? The human body is more than 60% water. Your brain and muscles are 75% water and your blood is 92% water. Water is vital to your body, and alkalizing your water is the key to keep it running at its best. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops keep your entire body healthy, boosts energy, promotes weight loss, and even fights cancer. Call 800-518-7615 or go to AlkaVision.com to find out more. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor period with packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Why would you go anywhere else? KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level four. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free water purification kit for a limited time with any body armor package. Go to KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I armor.com. Come and take it. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. 
Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $22 higher at $1,136 per ounce, and silver is $0.52 cents higher at $15.06 per ounce. It looks like precious metals have finally made the split from the stock market. We have plenty of Australian silver spiders and kangaroos in stock. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidabi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live, the live Sunday edition. It's Mark with you. And Rich Paul. 855 450 free. We're talking about, well, we're talking to Matthew, who Matthew is, as his uh, self described, stereotypical pothead. And surprise, surprise, he and a friend were followed by uh, a police officer yesterday or today or recently here. And. They didn't get pulled over, but it got kind of intimidated uh, they, enough to pull into a gas station and kind of wait for the guy to go away. <laughs> and it, Matt's uh, wondering why this keeps happening to him. And uh, what I've said up to this point is, is that essentially, well, yes, police profile, and we all know that. It's essentially the cost of, well, choosing to look like a stereotypical pothead is, is the having to deal with police who want to find an easy mark for, um, you know, their, their next bust. So Matt, I've, uh, you know, been frank with you. I think that, <laughs> I think the best way, if, if you want to, uh, you know, be left alone by these people is conduct yourself and look like the kind of person that they don't want to mess with. Matt, what are your thoughts? Oh, all right. Uh, in my defense, like, right now I was working at a uh, call center. Uh -huh. So, like, normally I do the whole, uh, you know, shirt and tie thing. What's that? I'm but sorry. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I normally do, 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 uh, do the shirt and tie look. Uh-huh. But, like, working in a call center and stuff, if you dress above your superiors, it sets, like, a really bad example, and then they have, like, really high expectations yep. for you. Sure. So, you know, just getting out of work, don't really want to look. You know, wearing what I don't really would work, wear to work. So, you know, usually outside of work, I dress incredibly presentable. 
But <clears throat> like what I was thinking was after watching the uh, Victimless Crime Spree video, mm-hmm. like I've actually been incredibly inspired, and I've recommended that video to several of my friends to watch. Because you can see it at victimlesscrimespree.com. Like, yes. So after watching that, like I've realized just how unjust most of these police officers are, and you know, not doing anything at all, and you know, you're going to get crap. So even though I haven't actually had a confrontation with police since then, like the whole time I'm sitting there waiting, I'm expecting them to come up and like tap on the window or something. Sure. And. Uh, the reason I called was I had another instance today where, you know, it's football Sunday, so I was wearing my jersey and stuff and went up to the gas station to get a pop. Mm-hmm. So while I'm there, there's two cops that are just sitting there in the gas station parking lot just looking around. And, you know, I even turned on my uh, cell phone, hit the record button, and just sat it on my, you know, seat like, hey, you know, if something happens, you know, recorded everything around. Like, hey, nothing's, I'm not doing anything. Let's see if, you know, they actually come up. This time they didn't. But I don't I'm know never what sure. I was with that. I yeah. yeah. Um, so, and Matt, what about the haircut? Um, I mean, wh- what kind of haircut do you have? I have a clean haircut. Do you? Sort like, of... I go up about every two weeks and get that all taken care of. Okay. Because, you know, what I find that are sort of the tip offs for police are, you know, the haircut, it's the type of car. I don't know specifically know what it is, um, you know, that they're, they're looking for specifically as far as cars go, but they do. And, um, you know, dress, uh, the sort of garb that one is wearing. Um, garb, you know, different people can be wearing different things at different times. Obviously, um, you know, the, the people working at Carabas um, are wearing ties. So a, a tie isn't always the, the thing that's going to get you um, out of stuff. I don't know. I, you know, I, it can be, it can be a frustrating uh, thing to deal with, but you know, I have had very few run-ins with police and I don't think there's any particularly good reason why it, uh, why that is other than, yeah, they just don't look at me as the kind of guy that they need to, to give trouble to. Matt, if you can, you uh, do look more like a murderer than a pot smoker. It's me, yeah. I, people with my haircut, Matt. Thank you for the call. Um, with my haircut, people are often, um, you know, suggesting people who don't know in the liberty movement are like, "Are you a cop?" You know, like that was my point. Right. <laughs> I've got I've got a haircut that a police officer might uh, wear. I've got uh, you know short cropped hair that I do with uh, the clippers at the house. I don't see any particular reason to pay somebody twenty dollars to uh, buzz my hair every couple of weeks, like I and when I know how to do it. Um, but you know, I don't know. I mean, wh- why is it rich? Why is it that, uh, so many people have so much trouble? I'm not talking about driving while black. That's a, you know, that's a different thing that obviously you can't do anything about. Mm-hmm. Although, uh, one of my best, my best friends in the world, he's, uh, I was uh, best man at his wedding. Um, he's black and we would drive around all the time together and there was never a problem. Well, it, Chris Rock says it helps to have a white friend. The having the white of, friend is uh, helpful. Chris Rock actually does a great video on how not to get beat up by police. Yeah. And uh, that might be helpful or or uh, give you some ideas. Isn't it just basically don't be rude to the police? Um. Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Don't be rude. Have a nice friend. Uh, or have a white friend turn that stuff off. Yeah, turn off the uh, the, the music. The music. Yeah. Um, yeah, a variety of things and yeah. all good advice. And but he's can go so find much it. funnier than I am. When absolutely, he says it. absolutely. Well, he just sounds funny the way he just his cadence of speaking. Mm. Um, but uh, nonetheless, going back to the story here from the Free Thought Project, where a nonverbal autistic man, 24 years old, wandered away from home, the uh, mother and family called the police to help them find him. However, lacking in training and uh, competence in dealing with, uh, you know, these kind of folks, turned out, well, guy ended up in the hospital, um, and the police found him, but they tased him. So instead of of getting a call that the police found her son and uh, that he's okay, the, the mother gets a call from the cops telling her that her son is in the hospital, and they had put him here. He hasn't been able to fall asleep in his own bed ever since. He's nervous. The family is now taking legal action, as none of the officers involved have ever been fired or 
even disciplined. They have uh, filed a federal lawsuit against the NYPD, alleging that police violated the civil rights of uh, of their son, Miguel. I don't think police departments get a lot of men, uh, training and dealing with uh, people with mental health issues. If any. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> there's a video that uh, came out recently. It was... Essentially, this uh, PR guy, it's a comedy video, a uh, PR guy that goes into a SWAT team thing and just <laughs> advising the guys, hey, you know, you know how you could have a better uh, presence in the community? Just stop shooting people's dogs. And just over and over again, like these guys that don't get it, that uh, maybe one of the reasons why, the, you know, the tide is turning against police. Now, mm. people are calling it a war on police. Well, if it was a war, there'd be more casualties, and casualties are down among police. So I wouldn't say there's a war, but there's a PR war against police. Well, there's probably there might be a war going on. I mean, citizens have only killed forty uh, police, but police have killed a thousand of us this year, and that's an old number. That was that's a couple months old. Yeah, the um, and ultimately that's what uh, I think that's what this PR battle is about. Is police don't get it. Um, they they say, well, you're, we're dealing with criminals here. Well, Miguel wasn't a criminal. The Fluffy mm. wasn't a criminal. When you've got a situation where cops are shooting a corgi, if you know what a corgi is, it's one of those little short legged dogs um, that the the queen has. Uh, the things mm. are, uh, you know, these vicious animals are twelve inches at their ears, at the top of their pointy little ears. They're tw- maybe twelve inches off the ground. Um, shooting one while it's in a cage. I mean, this isn't. <laughs> this isn't protecting and serving somehow or another other government bureaucrats in the form of post postal workers have been managing to deal with people's dogs for decades without shooting them pepper spray is the worst that goes so mace is the worst that goes on um and you know maybe sometimes you gotta mace a dog i get it but it, it's the actions this is, it's the actions that have occurred up to this point it's not the thing that's being done tomorrow it's the stuff that has happened. It's a preponderance of the crimes committed against the American people. And yeah. people are frustrated. How can we fix it? 855-450-3733. What's your solution? 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof form of money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom and the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. They say life is about choices. So let me introduce you to one of the best choices you can make in life, Granger Choice. The Granger Choice product line has just about everything we need to keep this place running, from batteries to V-belts, safety to sump pumps. And with Granger Choice, we can trust that every product is dependable and cost-effective. When it comes to making life choices, here's a great one, Granger Choice. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash choice or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't take on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Hey guys, it's Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. 
Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com, advancing the ideas of liberty daily. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. It's 855-453. It seems like, and lots of people uh, agree, that there is a coming um, uh, reckoning between sort of police and s- the citizens they serve. Now, I want this to end as well as possible. I want uh, you know, those that have sworn to protect us to, you know, protect us. Well, yeah, I, I, I want <laughs> I, you know, I want the best <laughs> results possible, right? Like I, but it change, especially when that change occurs with a government, often comes at high costs. It because uh, governments are monopolies, because customer service isn't really their job. If a police officer provides bad customer service, you can't choose not to use that police department again as long as you're within the bounds of that city or municipality or wherever it is because they are a governing body over that municipality. Any other, like you get a, you get bad service from your plumber, you get bad service from your cable company, you get bad service from whoever it is you're dealing with, And you can ultimately stop using them. But to stop using a police department, well, it's it's ludicrous. You can't. You have to go to war with them. You can't. You can't. I mean, you're still going to pay their paycheck. You have to stop. You have to have your house taken away from you by the property tax uh, mechanism in your town is the only way you can stop funding them. Or have a revolution. It's right. And and so far that really hasn't happened in the United States. True. Um thank goodness. I'm not looking for right. I'm not looking for that. That's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is a better solution to this uh quote unquote war on cops that's going on. I'm not going to use that terminology in real life. I think that that's it's sort of ludicrous if there is a war on cops going on. Look, they're winning. They're winning, right? <laughs> <laughs> um but I do think that there's been a bit of a sea change uh, as far as how uh, people feel that they're being served by their law enforcement agencies, um, and I'd like to see this get better. It's not going to get better unless the law enforcement agencies change, and they don't have any particular reason to change. They've got these unionized employees that are like, hey, we like the way we're doing things here. It's always been fine up to this point. What's the big deal? And you know the 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 um, most of the captains and the management they came up through the ranks so they feel the same way. 
ultimately they feel protected by their municipality because the municipality is going to pay. It's not the police officer is going to pay. They've got this uh, uh, this qualified immunity that essentially means that as long as they're doing their job as it's defined loosely, that they'll be covered, and that it's it's not going to have good results. If you remove the qualified immunity, I wonder what you'll get as far as service from the police, because it's probably they'll just say, we're not making calls anymore. They'll go on some kind of work slowdown for a long period of time and say, we're just not going out there to serve people because we don't feel protected by the law. Well, that would be an improvement. If they would just stay home and pick up their paychecks, they're still living off stolen money, but at least they're not hurting anybody. I, I mean, you know, that may very well be the case. I, when you look at, say, Detroit, where they have, well, um, the police have stopped doing calls at certain times of the day. Basically, if it's, um, you know, if it's not 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you can't get service from them. Well, they've got these private protection agencies. And in so in the absence of uh, police service, there's the private market has, has uh, filled in the, the gaps. But I wouldn't call Detroit exactly a model of where I want to live. Let's see what yet. You- <laughs> Give it a few years, maybe it'll improve now that the cops are out of the game. Because Detroit police were, oh, that department is a piece of work. I lived in uh, Ann Arbor for a long time. I've seen Detroit cops clubbing deadheads for having beer at Grateful Dead shows. It's just. Detroit cops were like the lowest of the low. They're uh, they're as high as NYPD on the scumometer, or they were when Detroit had cops. I don't know. I uh, I would imagine that their private protection agencies do much better. Let's go to Na- Dave calling in from Nevada. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry, Jay. Pardon me, Jay. You're on yeah, Free Talk Live. This is Jay. Yeah, I just um, I think that you guys are kind of living in a different um, realm here. I don't, I don't know where you guys are coming from, but I'm coming from New Hampshire. The reason why? Okay, that's maybe why on the on the liberal coast over there. But um, for wait a second, I don't know that you know that much about New Hampshire. We've got a Republican, uh, uh, the Republican ha- state house at this point, and I think the okay. the, the Senate too. Irregardless. If, if you, you had know, to, well, I, I mean, when you, if you're going to pop out with some kind of pre-contrived um, notion about what it's like here, I, I'm just going to let you know that it's not true. Okay, well, the pre-contrived, that's kind of from you calling the kettle black, because you guys are painting this um, broad picture of law enforcement in this country based off of absolutely no experience. Do you guys want to experience <laughs> it? Why don't you guys Which experience are you talking about? Do you know who, how I spent my car, last couple of years, bro? Jump, jump in a cop car. <laughs> And uh, go out and see what you guys are actually talking about because you guys are just coming across very, very ignorant. Okay, well, um, Ian, our um, main host, has uh, done some ride-alongs. Um, I have been, uh, I've been arrested before, as has Rich Paul. I mean, we have some experience no uh, with uh, the police. Yeah, so. I've spent a couple of yeah. years in jail. I think I know all I need to know about the uh, police exactly. state. So you guys got two guys, two guys that are running their mouths that have been on the opposite end of the friggin' law enforcement spectrum. So oh. you know, you guys don't have any 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 bias here, right? Well, well, well and on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yes, what? we're civilians. We're the people who are supposed to civilian. be being protected. Wait a second, I'm served. not a civilian. I'm a firefighter. I spent uh, this week uh, dealing with a situation um, with the the police where. Where a guy had car flipped over. So, I mean, I think I'm also on both sides of these scenarios. What have I said that sounds anti-police to you? Well, when you're talking about how the people are rising up and, and all this, I mean, everything you guys are saying is way off base. I mean, police are talking really about are. police unions are releasing press releases about a war on cops. I'm simply speaking to that. You're simply speaking to what? The fact that. The police unions and policing organizations are talking about a war on cops. They're talking okay, about it. You guys, I'm are you commenting guys, on it. You guys, okay, are you aware of any of the line of duty deaths that happened in August and September? 
Uh, uh, there have been, I know there have been 40 deaths of police officers so far this year. But only and, 20 of them were um, having, sort of having to do with being shot at. Mentally. Yeah, 20 of them were homicides. And meanwhile, they've killed a thousand of us. So really to say well, it's so a war you, on us, cops. What do you mean us? You mean other jailbirds? Is that what you mean, us? Uh, you by us, I mean the civilians who pay their salaries, sir. Okay, so us is, you were the one that just said that you were the one that spent a couple of years in jail, right? So uh, yeah, for selling friend, weed. Right? In other words, I never hurt anybody, which is a lot more than the pigs who busted me can say. You've never hurt anybody? Have you ever seen any kids get ejected out of a burning vehicle, Mr. Fireman, on the other end from somebody that was driving DUI on marijuana? You never heard anybody, huh? Actually, no, dude, you if, you, if you'll read up on your research, you'll find that they just did a study on driving on marijuana, and it does not impair your ability to operate a motor vehicle. So perhaps you should study something, sir. He's hung up on you. Um, I think that enough marijuana will cause somebody to, uh, you know, to be impaired. Uh, there, there are. Oh, tests they'd on be that unable too. to drive. They just wouldn't try past a certain point. Couch lock <laughs> prevents it. But to suggest that a drug dealer is responsible for a, um, you, you know, a, a, an automobile accident would suggest that a liquor store is also mm -hmm. responsible for an automobile accident if it was done by a drunk driver. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the um, but, the, but the study was actually uh, very good. I'm going to have to bring that in next time I'm on the I air. I think the most telling uh, statistics about violence um, by police against uh, you know citizens is that um, during the month of March, there were more killings of, poli by, of police by, of citizens than there were in Great Britain, in the United States, than there were in Great Britain in the 20th century. Yes, there's a difference in the size of Great Britain in the United States, but the difference between one month and a 100 century. years, it's just, it's phenomenal. Let's go to Ralph calling in from New Jersey. Ralph, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, how are you, my dear man? All is well, sir, and you? Well, okay, yes. The, the, you know, the calm before the storm, so to speak. Now, the problem with white liberal girls, white and, uh, liberal you know, guilt. Oh, oh, that's right. There you go. See? Uh, you know the deal about now? I never uh, think of myself as liberal, but hold on. Um, hold this, hold this the line, Ralph. Girl, just, just hold on. This hold on. The guys of libertarianism. Okay, hold on. Well. <laughs> 855 450 3733. Ralph's going to get us. 855 450 free. Call in. What do you think about? police violence in America. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit strategicshelters.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at savetimehosting.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, October 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $241. Antiwar.com reports the Pentagon promised an investigation on Saturday after it was revealed that an AC-130 warplane carried out sustained fire against a Doctors Without Borders run hospital on the outskirts of the Taliban held city of Kunduz, killing 19, including 12 staffers and three children. The hospital was already overwhelmed by the huge number of casualties from the past week of fighting over Kunduz, which the Taliban seized on Monday. Doctors Without Borders is demanding clarification on what happened noting they contacted the U.S. after the first strike near the hospital to warn them it was so close and sustained attacks against the hospital continued for over 30 minutes after that. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul expressed condolences but did not apologize for the attack, while both the U.N. mission to Afghanistan and the Red Cross condemned the strikes, saying it was unacceptable to undermine humanitarian organizations in the war zone. Though Doctors Without Borders reported 19 dead and 37 injured as a preliminary toll, they added that 30 other people were unaccounted for, meaning the tolls will almost certainly rise in the hours to come. This is not the first time the U.S. has come under fire for its actions against hospitals in Afghanistan, though it is by far the biggest such incident. Back in 2009, there were a pair of incidents, including one in which U.S. ground troops attacked a hospital, forcing their way in and tying up the staff before smashing up the place. That hospital was run by the charity group, the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports many of Illinois' medical cannabis cultivation centers are harvesting their first medicinal cannabis crops this weekend. The 75,000-square-foot cultivation center in Barrie, Illinois, the biggest in the state, is already preparing its first shipment to patients. The center is one of two owned and managed by Revolution Enterprises. The state's medical cannabis law took effect on January 1, 2014, making Illinois the 20th state to approve the use of cannabis for specific medical conditions. Medical cannabis products will soon be available in dispensaries around the state. Tim McGraw, CEO of Revolution Enterprises, said the new industry will be a boon to the economy and to patients who need relief. The list of conditions approved for medical cannabis include debilitating conditions and diseases like cancer and AIDS, but does not include chronic pain or post-traumatic stress disorder, something McGraw hopes will soon change. On Wednesday, politicians and veterans met in Barrie to discuss the possibility of adding PTSD to the list of approved conditions. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot radio. Dot com. Reuters reports as Germany celebrated 25 years since reunification on Saturday, President Joachim Gauck said Europe's refugee crisis posed a greater challenge to the country than the welding together of Western Germany and the former Communist East. Gauck, a former Lutheran pastor from East Germany who played a prominent role in the peaceful protests that led to the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, said the two halves of the country had become one over the past quarter of a century. Back then, West Germans cheered and clapped their Eastern peers 
frontiers as they crossed the border that had separated them for decades. Gawk, who has a largely ceremonial role but is considered a moral authority for the nation, warned that integrating refugees with different religions and cultures would be much rougher than uniting Germans, who shared the same language, national culture, and history even during their separation. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Crammed into tiny bar stools, cramped diner booths, and filthy cars where moving their limbs is either uncomfortable or impossible, hundreds of thousands of consumers rip apart chicken wings or tear off bites of heroes and hamburgers every single day, often to the point of bloating, belching, and outright physical pain. Barbecue sauce or hamburger juice will literally dribble down these poor beasts' mouths and onto their shirts, their beards thick with pungent grease. Treated as little more than machines to be stuffed full of smoked pork, marinated chicken, and dry-aged beef, consumers are forced to wait in long lines, often while still fully conscious, before buying their meat and ripping it off the bone with their mouths in plain view of other consumers. The majority of meat consumers are often prodded to ingest vastly more than their bodies can handle thanks to cruel promotions like 25-cent wing nights and family-sized buckets of chicken. Help stop the brutality by visiting... This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live, it's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. Ian is off at an awards dinner for some organization or another. And uh, so you got Mark with you. And Rich Paul. And you can call in and talk about whatever you want, but uh, I've hailed Ralph from New Jersey over to, uh, he, he appeared to be leveling a um, accusation that we are experiencing white liberal guilt. And so I wanted to give him the opportunity to, to flesh that out for us. What? You know, you're talking about uh, white liberal guilt as it currently exists in its present form in this country, okay. which is libertarianism, which is you, and I will give the uh, other guy, the Richard, Richie Rich? or Richard, the benefit of the doubt, because I don't know him very well, okay? Not that I know you very well. But Can you by now, define you know, libertarianism but, for me? Because I'm afraid you don't know what it is. Can you define it for me? Well, Bernie Sanders. That's what no. that's okay. what libertarianism is. No, no, You're no. Completely mistaken. <laughs> no. Bernie, Bernie Sanders, Sanders is a socialist. Why? 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 I'm telling you. It's independent libertarian. That's what it's, it's no. he claimed to be. No, he does not claim to be libertarian. He might be claimed to be a social libertarian, but he will definitely not claim to be a libertarian. A libertarian is a person that believes the government should leave you alone to live your life. That human beings working together in concert okay. can solve is, problems. Is Obama doing fa- that? Is Obama doing that? No. Is oh okay. Now now that we established, is do you in in your opinion is Obama a man of virtue? Virtue? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'd say no, not, not particularly. He's a politician. Right. That's He's a, pretty much, he couldn't be a man of virtue at the same time. That's, it's hard to say politician <laughs> and virtue in the same sentence, other than sort of like politicians are generally devoid of virtue. Yes, yes, that works. That's like the snake, same thing, you know, Adam and Eve to eat the apple, right? I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it. didn't happen, but yeah, I mean... Okay. Well, do you, you believe know, in but, talking snakes, sir? <laughs> but you know, at the heart of the matter, with the white liberal girl, see, you have to deal with them before you can get to Obama. Okay. But you know, I'm not, I'm not worried about that now because, uh, you know, uh, you have Trump, uh, who is, uh, you know, uh, changing, you know, who is. Uh, Making waves right now as he goes along. He's uh, still polling very high, have, but the, he's in in um, you, uh, New Hampshire and uh, uh, Iowa. The, uh, the the gap is closing. The gap the gap is closing with with him and the other two. Yeah, Carson, Carson and, and, and Fiorina. Fiorina and, and Carson. How does Carson, that make you feel? Carson let me let me Fiorina. ask you about uh, no. Ralph. Do you like Ben Carson? Do you think he's a good candidate? Uh, I'm again, again, you you. Didn't we, we talk about this, my friend, before, that I'm willing, when it comes to black, I'm willing to judge them by their character rather than by their complexion. Good. Okay? That's good news. And thus far, I haven't seen anything 
you know, uh, that this man Carson is a man of character, okay? You got a situation over there in Virginia. Clearly, that is a hate crime, okay? That is an act of bigotry. Blacks can be racist, too. Which which I mean, situation this in Virginia? A, I'm not sure what we're talking with, about in Virginia. This is, the, this is the problem with white liberal girls. You uh, understand? Well, uh, no, because uh, I don't you know, know what we're talking about. What happened Obama, in Virginia, Obama bro? Is a man of virtue and everyone else is a racist. What happened in Virginia? What are you talking about? Well, you know, you got this black animal who played a race card, number one, and also uh, played is this a, a poker card. player. What did he do? The reporter, the 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 two okay. reporter that right. was right. Okay, good. Down. All right, you found the. You know uh, about that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, no. Yep. There was a bad guy right. that shot a couple of people um, on on TV. There's no doubt about it. There's uh, been some other mass it was shootings. On video, right? How, how come how come Obama didn't make uh, a big deal out of that as he did in Oregon? Because there's no political hate to be made out of that one. That's why. Okay. And and the speaking of the war on police. Do you think Obama, Obama didn't go after that guy because he's black? That's the, the, the he didn't he didn't condemn it because the the perpetrator was black. Is that the claim? That's right. Okay. That's right. Could be. You know, I don't know. And, and and the one in Oregon is really also uh he, he can also be considered black. His mother was black. Okay? His mother was black. Uh, okay. But. You know, I don't know. See, the, none of it matters to me. What matters to me is that people are killing people. Okay, so the issue with you is 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 people killing people rather than guns, correct? What? I'm sorry. People that are killing people. What? The, the guns? The, the the guns is not the, the issue with, as far as you're concerned. I don't is think that, that people is, having guns. Right? right, right. I am not uh, for taking people's guns away. I think that it's laughable. They, they, Okay, thank you. Now you really establish yourself as not a white liberal girl. Okay. Now you really establish yourself finally. Finally. Okay. Let me establish you know? this, Ralph. Here's what my belief is. He is white. It's true. Uh, well, I'm whiteish. I've got some Asian blood and some uh, uh, Ashkenazi Jewish blood. You do? Um, you, you, you do? Yes, um, right. but there's regardless, it doesn't really matter what my race is. Here's what my claim is, is uh, Ralph. My claim is is that the United States government claiming that it's going to take people's guns away is absolutely ridiculous when they're dropping bombs on Doctors Without Borders hospitals in Afghanistan. They can't control guns any better than they can control their own smart bombs, which is to say they cannot control anything. It's uh, What's funny is, is that the government can fail its way to success over and over again. This is an organization that fails constantly and then demands more power. Does that make sense? Okay. That, it, 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 does, it does make a lot of sense. It but, does? You know, uh, how, how, how do you explain the fact, this is part of the political agenda of this man, Obama, the war on police and, you know, constantly uh, um, agitating about the issue of gun. Now, with regard to the war on the police, it's not just Obama. The white liberal, you can say, is, uh, you know, alongside on that. And the uh, Black Lives Matter and the, uh, you know, the well, criminal elements Ralph, in the ghetto is also uh, on board with regard to that. Now, here's a story out of Baltimore, Maryland. Remember Baltimore people? Yeah, remember, I remember the, 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 remember the Baltimore? situation there. And yeah. what happened there? Yeah. Okay. All right. The, the only reason why there was a million dollar settlement uh, in that case is because they rioted. You know, and then this mayor, uh, you know, like the stupid individual that she is, is telling us we paid him off the million dollars so we would not have any right. And now remember now, Stephen A. Rollins Blake, the same person who said, uh, you know, allow him a space to destroy. Meaning, meaning he take the direct, she take the direct order from Obama to allow the cop to not do anything while the animals are, you know, uh, looting, burning, uh, pillaging, and plundering the whole entire city. Do it, uh, Ralph, but, you do know, you ever have well, any... it was the police doing their best to keep order that caused the riot in the first place because they there, murdered yeah, some I people, and that irritates one. folks. So going out and murdering more people might not actually result in the sort of peace that you might think it would. Well, yeah, 
well, arrest is down and crime is up. That's the crime is not day up. without police in uh, America. That's crime is down, bro. Right. You've been watching so too much, much Fox News. Okay. So much for that one, huh? You know, that's what you're going to get when you have the world on top in America. I have no Arrest idea what he's talking about. Thanks for the call, Ralph. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe we should have tried pushing one and seeing if it came out in English. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph gets excited and he gets, it gets more difficult to understand him, but he... He certainly doesn't agree with us necessarily. He seems to be very, very against Barack Obama. And well, who isn't these I, days? <laughs> his numbers are his numbers are better than Bush's were at this time of his uh, in, in his. Uh, what his, are Obama's numbers now? Do you I'd know? have to pull them up. Okay. but uh, it's worth it's worth doing. Let's get go to Zach. Um, oh, Zach, we'll get him in uh, just a moment. You can give us your thoughts here on the uh, issue of police shootings in the United States. 855-450-3733, 855-450-free. You can call us on Skype, too. The username is lrn.fm, 855-450-free, Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Yeah! Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 8... 8- 55 4, 50, free. You can call in and talk about whatever you want. Um, yeah, we just got off the phone with Ralph, who was accusing us of having white liberal guilt and uh, agreeing with Bernie Sanders. So yeah, you can call in and make whatever accusation, what, uh, however specious and unfounded it might be. 855-450 free. I am heading out to Las Vegas for our very first remote broadcast from Sin City ever. It'll be at the end of this month at the beautiful D Hotel for the Bitcoin Investor Conference. You can get your tickets at bitcoininvestor.com. It's going to have they have a great lineup of speakers including uh, Bitcoin Bell, former co-host here on Free Talk Live, Joseph Von Perling, Paul Pui, Tone Vase, excited to see Tone. Again, Trace Mayer, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, Brian Sovereign, and a few co-hosts there, former co-hosts at uh, the Bitcoin Investor Conference. It again the beautiful D Hotel, downtown Las Vegas. Get your tickets at bitcoininvestor.com. It's October the 29th and 30th, and it's the first event that we've ever had in Vegas. Bitcoininvestor.com. Who's Bitcoin Bell? It's uh, Michelle Seven. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, it's always a delight to see her. Say hi to Michelle for me. She yeah. rocks. Indeed. Let's go to the phones. Zach calling in, apparently about Ralph. Zach, you're listening on TuneIn Radio. Zach, can you hear me? I don't know who Zach is. Okay, it says Zach James. What's on your mind? I said I'm Zach James. What's on my mind? You're emphasizing that the U.S. military using a smartphone to kill innocent people unintentionally is about as stupid as uh, somebody erasing your worthyhood and humanity for having been a witness to a murder that was committed intentionally. And by the way, is it true that you gave that murderer a lift to the airport? Um, I'm not sure how this uh, fits in, but if you want to talk about the, the uh, crime... That... I guess, if you're not thinking, then, how it fits in is you erase, you seem to knock down the U.S. government's uh, worthiness by emphasizing the worst thing that some people that work for the government did, did this week, right? But did in you the get same week, the James, in the same week, questions? I'll be happy to answer, answer your question, same. but I, I want to show the difference. Um, okay. In the same the week difference? that they wish to take away uh, your ability to possess a firearm, and I'm not sure whether you can with as many DUIs as you've had, but um, you know, maybe you could possess a firearm. One, by the way, Minister, since you it mentioned it, looks it, like one, but four from what I've seen. That you've Okay, are you calling me a liar? Because I know you are a liar. I, I, I have one. I'm just saying that I'm looking at one. facts, James, and we've looked on lines. One. Okay, I'll I have one. take your word for it. Fact, you say Can you I have legally three. own a firearm? That's not true. No, I've fired two guns in my life. And as you probably know from listening to Peace News now, ironically, the two guns I fired in my life were 15 years apart, and the two people whose guns I, I fired had a mutual best friend in high school, as ironically as that is. But did you give a lift to the airport of some of you watched murder your fellow human being? I think the answer is yes, so you don't have to bother with. But my point is that since you take you extract from the particular and argue into the general, which is a logical fallacy. But anyway, uh, Rich Paul, out of the thousand people that were killed by cops in a country of over 300 million people, in a country unlike the UK, there are 200 million arms in private possession in the United States of America, which makes our geographical spot on the map very unique. That's why cops sometimes turn into predators. And sometimes I'm willing to guess which out of those thousands of people, the thousand people out of 300 million that were killed by cops, 
I'm going to get the majority of them had it coming and put them. Why in had it coming? That's very what nice. Think, Why well, is it if, that there's 10 I mean, times as well, cops think, shoot Rich, 10 times as many people in the United States as they do in Canada? It's on the same continent, isn't it? Because there's 200 million guns in the United States of America. No, I meant, t- Canada, I meant 10 times. Don't have a right I should have said 10 arms, times as many. Cops don't have to worry about there's a five. Guns. There's 3,000 miles of border between us and, the, and Canada. If guns want to get across, right. that they certainly How can. How guns are north of Canada? What's that? How many guns are north of the United States of America? There are many guns in Canada. They have lots and many? lots of guns, but the gun. Two hundred million? No, they're twenty. What? They have the a tenth of the population. Thirty million. The population of Canada. I feel like I'm talking to somebody I just can't make any sense with. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. It's eight fifty five four fifty free. Let's go to. Not even sure what this name is. Is it Diane in Nevada? Yeah. Hi. Um. I wanted to call and let you know, um, I was living in L.A. area, Mm -hmm. and on a Friday evening, we had guests over, and we weren't breaking the law. My next-door neighbor um, called because people were talking on my outside deck, so I pull up from McDonald's, and it's about 11 on a Friday night, and the cops said, um, everyone needs to go. And I'm like, we just have a few guests. There was like 20 people, all total, including, and I had a five-bedroom, three-bath house. So what they did is they spun me around, arrested me, and I told them three times, you don't have permission to enter my home without a warrant. And I you said it two more times. And they walked in my house, just opened the door, walked in, chased my 19-year-old daughter who was wearing a cocktail dress in the throat, from a distance of four feet, the guests were just like terrified and up against the wall. They were afraid to move. They they were just horrified. They didn't know what was going on. And then they tried to charge my daughter with hitting a cop, which all as four she of fell. The cops had different <laughs> stories, huh? And like as she fell. Yeah, no. And then he tased her twice. He tased her again when she was on the ground. Yeah. Little kid. I mean, 19 years old. And she didn't hit anybody. And all four of the cops had different stories. And the cop that picked up the call, it wasn't even his call. He had a crush on my oldest daughter. And that's why he picked up the call. Then he stole her shoes from the booking room. So my 19-year-old almost went to prison for assaulting an officer because they lied. So we get a, a civil rights attorney. I have it on, recorded. He accidentally gave me a recording of hi, of him per, saying that I perjured myself. So it's proof I, that he's working for the police, and he's a civil rights cop, I mean, um, attorney. And then on top of that, I can't find I, – I had to appeal it myself because the, the federal courthouse, you wouldn't get – this is such a racket – they would not let us leave on a Friday night. They said we're gonna we're gonna be here till maybe one, two in the morning, but we're gonna have you sign. So it was like they wanted me to sign twenty thousand dollars. The cops tried to kill me. They took the bolts out of the hood of my car. My hood flew up on the bridge. What the heck? And they stole my van. No, this is no joke. They think this is funny. The cops in in L.A. area think this is a big effing joke, and it's not funny. There are and a lot of complaints against L.A. police. There's no doubt about it. Is this Was this oh, yeah, Los Angeles Police joke. Department? Yep. Well, actually, the new sheriff. Uh, so L.A. County? Uh, McDonald. Yeah, McDonald that used to be in Long Beach. It's um, his crew. I got gotcha. you. And he hires gang members. East Side Longos. Diane, I appreciate the call. Um, let us know if uh, anything changes in the case. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. I kind of feel like America doesn't feel protected and served. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Uh, no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9 millimeter bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. 
hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about on this live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Rich Paul. Yep, you can uh, beat us up as we have been beaten up so uh, terribly this evening. For Ooh, beat me, baby. You know that's how I like it. <laughs> Apparently, just having the opinion that there is a... Uh, you know, that things, Americans' attitude towards law enforcement is changing here in the near future, uh, you know, in the recent past, is a problem. I, I, I'm surprised at that. Let's go to the phones. Uh, Socrates is uh, on the line, calling in from New Hampshire. Socrates, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Mark. Want to change gears here really quick to a sure. conversation that, conversation you had with my fiance on Facebook. It, it, it goes to the question on, does the non-aggression principle extend to 
other other beings that aren't human? I wonder about this myself. Um, this is a uh, you know this is a question that comes up in libertarian circles now and then, and um, the question is is that the non-aggression principle, which is the idea that you should not use force against someone who hasn't used it against you, and force can be and take the form of uh, force, fraud, um, you know things like that. So. That's uh, oftentimes people will equate that to, well, what about eating meat? You have, uh, you know, animals out there that have done nothing to you in order to, uh, you know, uh, in, in order to eat meat, you must kill them. So, or at least be, be involved in the killing. You purchase their flesh in many cases. So what do you think, Socrates? Well, I was I was going to ask you. Okay. Because um, I, I, I have my own uh, kind of personal understanding of, uh, animals and how close they are, how, how similar they are to humans and how, how much humanity they can express. But it goes, it's very, very simple. I, I, you raise mammals, right? You raise yep. pigs and cows? Yep, I raise, pig, I raise okay. pigs, yeah. Now, do you, do you get to know your pigs and cows well? Do you name Just them? Just pigs. Um, yes, I, uh, I, they, they have names. Every one of them has a name. Yep. You name them after okay. senators, now, don't you? Senators. Uh, but this year, this year's it's presidents and first ladies. Um, Jack, you know, this way it gives Jack. Uh, we're homeschooling, and it gives him some idea of uh, who we're dealing with here. It gives him uh, a touchstone when he hears about a particular politician. He thinks, so it's oh, not like pig. a human name; it's a politician. Name. <laughs> Go ahead, Socrates. No, no, it's all right. So my question was, was why do you name them if they don't have any distinct personality? If they ever oh, they have distinct personalities. I would not claim that they did they not. Did. Okay, so my question is to you: Is do you ever see pigs that express any human traits? Sure, they uh, express human traits all the time. Humans are animals, and uh, pigs are very much like humans in many ways. Uh, animals have personalities. Any dog owner, anybody who's owned a, more than one dog, will tell you that dogs have different personalities. They have a really okay. hard time with calculus, though. <laughs> so my question is: because it's not a cow and because it's not a chicken, who you could, you know. You could raise them and get their milk or get their eggs uh, without doing them harm. The only purpose of raising pigs is to slaughter them. Yeah. So why would it, well, so my, my question is, what gives you the right to slaughter pigs? Yeah, um, I think that uh, ultimately it comes down to a question um, that you, you ask, you know, what is, uh, because to me I believe that life is consumption. Um, ultimately, in order to live, I must displace animals. We, we built our house. And there were things that lived in the ground and around um, where that was. So I stole their property in order to build a house. Um, we have a garden, and we grow vegetables in that garden. And, you know, there are things that get in there that uh, must be eliminated. So we've killed a whole bunch of leeches and a whole bunch of Japanese beetles and, um, you know, of quite a few gophers and a variety of things like that. One thing that uh, is never mentioned by plant eaters is, is that, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of animals that have to die for the production of your plants. When that tractor is driven across the ground to, uh, you know, say deal deal with the corn or the lettuce or whatever it is, it's crushing things. Flower is murder, man. May, Flower is murder. If I may, uh, the, re the only reason I interject and counter to this argument, I, I'm not a vegetarian, not a pescatarian. Yep. I eat all seafood, so but so I I, I kind of draw a line where I say. Every when you see animals that have human traits in terms of being able to have traits of that only humans could possess in terms of being able to emotionally connect, like for example, horses, dogs, cats, cows. I've all seen them single-handedly being able to emotionally connect on like a subconscious level, where like you know they'll remember who you are. They'll feel like an obligation to take care of you. They'll feel an obligation to like look after their young. These types of things. Well, you don't see those with beetles. You don't see that with fish. You don't okay. see that with these other Excellent. animals. I, I got I got where you're coming from on that one. I think that's a it's a fine argument, um, you know, and I'm willing to take them as they come um, when it comes to these uh, the, these debates. Some people will draw their lines at a central nervous system, a spinal column. You know, everybody's got their line. For me, the line is a, the types of animals that have been scientifically tested to be able to see themselves to recognize themselves in the mirror. So if you put a mirror up to a dog, oftentimes they will bark at it, or they'll come to the point that they just cease paying attention to that particular dog in that uh, behind that glass. 
but they don't understand that uh, that that is them in the mirror. Generally, this is my understanding as according to science as the way that they uh, test these things. Whereas so a chimpanzee, would you eat dog? Um, I, I would have no problem eating a dog. Um, oh, okay. You know, I wouldn't go out and prepare one, but if somebody prepared one for me, I'd give it a try. Um, so you like dog, but only if it's properly cooked. <laughs> but um, chimpanzees can definitely uh, hold elephants. That standard. Most people have that double standard. But they're like, oh, how dare you kill it? It's disgusting. You're eating horse meat or dog meat. It's like I don't understand the difference between eating cow meat and dog meat and horse meat. I, see, I don't see one. Mammals, you eat mammals. Yeah, I don't see one there. But let me, um, I'll, I'll uh, let me give my rebuttal. So pigs don't see the future, the way that humans see the future. Um, pigs don't l think about their mortality in the way that humans think about their mortality. Um, you know, you and I know that one day we will die, assuming that uh, science doesn't jump to the point that we have indefinitely extend extended our lives. But we at least have a, a reasonable idea that death is around the corner. Pigs understand pain, and they may understand that they don't wish to be sort of contained or held or something like that, but they don't know about the future. So what they're concerned with, you know, as evidenced by the, the diet and the things they prefer to eat, they apparently don't understand the future. But, um, you know, they, they just go about each day as, it, uh, as life presents it to, it to them. So if they end their lives quickly, then they never even knew it was coming. In the case of my pigs, I make sure that they are slaughtered right there at the farm by somebody who's uh, very good at it while I'm standing there. Um, and I can tell you, we dispatched uh, Chuck Schumer, uh, Mitch McConnell, um, Harry Reid, and Rand Paul last year, and those pigs dropped like a sack of potatoes when they were shot right between the eyes. And then, um, you know, they had they were they had they were in heaven before the uh, before the knife even touched their throat, and then they you know were completely bled out in two minutes. So. I'd say that that is about as humane as uh, a way to go as possible, especially for an animal doesn't even know that they're going to go one day. Okay. I, I do see a difference, my, my, at least in my experience. Most of the animals, when they're growing up in any type of farm, they even chickens, like, right? Even though house people think chickens are ret retarded and really stupid. No, they are. When they're on a – but – they know when they're uh, when they're going to get slaughtered. Like when the guy comes by and picks up one chicken every single week, right? The other chickens tend to react in a uh, in a very very like prepared fashion, and then go back to normal once once they pick their chicken and go away. My rebuttal to you is that if uh, if you see a fear, and at least when I see cows, I can't give you pigs, but when I see fear in a cow's eye, before it's 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 uh, hung upside down and it's net, you know it's throat slit. I, I kind of I th isn't that just halal? I, I, I just want to stop you right there. Well, I'll let you finish it about the, the fear in their eyes, and I'll even hold you over here. But generally, when animals are held upside down and their, no their throats are uh, slit without them being dead, isn't that some kind of religious way of, of preparing animals? I don't think that's the normal way. I think that the an animal has to be killed before it's bled out here in the United States. I'll let you address that here in just one second, Socrates. Okay. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Flu season's on the way, but there are steps you can take now to be prepared, like getting your flu shot. And Walmart makes it simple. Just walk in any time to get your flu shot from one of our certified pharmacists. No appointment necessary. To make it even easier, we accept most insurance plans. A flu shot's your best shot at staying healthy this flu season. And Walmart can make taking that simple step easier than ever. Some immunizations may not be available in all locations due to state law restrictions on pharmacist-administered immunizations. Age restrictions may apply. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX 
That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Anyone can publish on the internet, but not everyone is publishing material suited for online reading. According to the Yahoo Style Guide, it cautions that internet content has a few seconds, three or less, to encourage people to read more, to take action, or navigate to another one of your pages. So make it easy for readers to pick and choose. Isn't that the way you poke around online? Use short words, short sentences, short paragraphs, bulleted lists, and short pages. Front load what you write, putting the most important information at the beginning of headlines and paragraphs and sentences. Same goes for your keywords. What someone would likely type into the search box on Yahoo or Google. For more tips on communicating better online or in a job interview or everyday life, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We were just talking about the non-aggression principle. That's the uh, the libertarian mantra, as it were. The notion that you shouldn't aggress against someone. And that means to use force against them if they haven't used force against you. And it's, you know, most people can really, you know, sort of get it pretty quickly. It's a, it's a axiom that uh, really works for them. And we ascribe to it here on the show and think it's a pretty great way to uh, uh, conduct your lives. But how does it relate to animals? I want to address that here in a second, but first I want to tell you about James versus the New World Order, the new graphic novel put out by Brandon Bitros and illustrated by J. Matthew Root. Um, it's the first of what's estimated to be a five-volume, 24-issue series about James Contrell, a big-hearted country boy with a crappy job who's learned to live without dreams as he deals with an occult, a bizarre occult army calling itself the Trust that invaded his sleepy little mountain town. Sometimes those without dreams are best suited to handle the nightmare. It's an action comedy graphic novel, and I'm excited to see it. You can go pre-order at jamesversusthenewworldorder.com. That's James vs. the New World Order .com. Um, It's a pre-order situation. They're trying to raise the money to be able to handle artwork, coloring, production, distribution. See their proposal over at James vs. the New World Order .com. I like fiction as a way to spread the ideas of liberty because I believe that uh, you can sort of slide it under the radar. You know, people want to see, hear a good story. They may not know the ideas of liberty. This is a great way to show them how it works. James, vs. the New World Order dot com. So um, the questions on the table is, and I'm a farmer. I raise pigs. 
and I raise them. And my attempt is to raise them the best that they possibly can be um, with their well-being uh, at, at heart. I haven't seen too many farmers that raise their animals any differently. Now, admittedly, I haven't been on, you know, I don't visit a new farm every day or anything, but I've been on, you know, a dozen farms, um, had a chance to see what they do. Some of them do things that I wouldn't, wait the way things I wouldn't do them. Some of them, you know, I've learned from and have, uh, you know, changed my methods. I'm not a great big farmer. I don't run a big operation. I've got 20 pigs at the house, and um, some of them will be going back, their their breeder stock, and they'll be going back to another farm for the winter because I basically run a summer camp for pigs. But the ones that stay, I believe it's going to be 11 of them, are going to go to heaven and provide bacon and ham and uh, ground pork to people. And hopefully it will be as good as it has been in the past. Mm, yeah. Heaven. <laughs> what people... <laughs> I've been assured by the butcher that every one of my animals goes to heaven. Uh, well, I'd, I'll tell you, we can send in somebody from the Church of the Invisible Hand to help them along their way for a small fee. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Buying <laughs> indulgences for my pigs. Yes, yes. They've always been very good pigs, so they don't need your indulgences. Nonetheless. But indulge me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Rich Paul? What's How does the non-aggression principle apply to animals? Um. Well. Or does it? I I do not believe that it does apply to animals, or I do not believe that it should be necessarily applied uh, to animals at this time. And the reason is because there are a lot of humans right now who are dying of poverty. And until we've gotten humans uh, squared away, I'm not going to worry about the pigs. Now, if I'm in a situation where I have to deal with pigs, like I'm a pig farmer, then obviously I'm going to be as kind to them as possible and as nice to them as as possible. Um, but I'm in it as a as a for profit uh, business. But I I believe that the rights of animals are subordinate uh, to those of mankind. That said, if, uh, you know, I was in, I was in uh, jail with a guy who was in there for diddling his dog. And, oh my, um, you know, from my point of view, if he can kill it and eat it for dinner, he can diddle it. Um, a, but it's disturbing nonetheless. But it's disturbing. It, it creeped me out um, nonetheless, and certainly my reaction would have been very different if he'd been tried to get cozy with my dog, okay? Because that's not his dog, that's my dog. And the thing is, so I do consider animals to be to have more or less the property, the status of property. But one thing that you have to keep track, keep in mind with pets is that this may be property that is very dear to somebody, and yes. he may take a terribly dim view of it if you damage that particular piece of his property. Yeah. And so, uh, many times, beware. Yeah, many times when you're dealing in, you know, in my town, um, the probably the single biggest complaint from a legal standpoint is. That guy's dog got out and killed my chickens or did something on my farm and, uh, you know, disturbed me in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll just be complaining that that's what occurred because, you know, those chickens, when that dog gets in and kills all 20 of your chickens, you're going to be pretty upset too. Well, sometimes that guy shoots that dog. Mm -hmm. And this is a this is a highly emotionally charged situation um, there's no doubt about it people love their animals mm. and i love my pigs the way that I, you know these these animals i tell people over and over again i don't sell pork i sell um, or or pigs for that matter i don't mm. i sell love and respect because that's how these animals are treated they've all got names they're all treated as though they're uh, you know they're whole and complete human or they're whole and complete beings but I I understand what their 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 downfalls are. I I get that they don't see the future, and that's one of the reasons I'm able to sort of make a deal with them. Hey, you know, mm -hmm. life is going to be really really great for about eight months, and then there's going to be one bad day, mm -hmm. and <laughs> that bad day is going to be as as best as I possibly can make it for you. But that's how that's going to work. 
And, mm. you know, some people want organically sourced animals. You know, maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. I, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I have my pigs because the I want to see that my food has been taken good care of. Like, I'm concerned about its well-being. And the other reason is, is that I abhor waste. Forty percent of our food, some of the numbers out there, it's difficult to know what, what numbers are and how good they are. But some of our numbers are that 40 percent of human food is goes to waste. Now, I don't, you know, I we do some composting at the house, but I prefer my compost to have been run for, through a pig first. And that's really good for the land. And, you know, it's 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 a nice way to, to take care of bread that has gone past its best by date and milk and these sorts of things, things that peri- are quite perishable, pigs love. Yeah, well, they get a lot of vegetation and these sorts of things that uh, come from farms, but it's a good way to uh, get rid of it. Mm-hmm. I will say that um, you know, something doesn't have rights unless it can sort of claim them mm-hmm. and can respect those rights in others. That pigs- That's my other thing. Thing about animal rights is animals will not respect your rights and I don't respect the rights of a human who doesn't respect my rights either so <laughs> yeah and th- that's it, it's a blanket statement right like many people are eating uh, pork chops and hamburgers from animals that they don't know for certain would have aggressed against them but um, yeah I mean you know animals you know, they're, they, they don't look at the it's pretty obvious from a certain amount of observation that they're not looking at the world in the same way and if somebody can't reciprocate the non-aggression principle to me because the vast majority of humans I come in contact with, um, they look like people that generally are not aggressing against other people. They operate in their day-to-day life that way. One of the nice things about the non-aggression principle is just about everybody lives by it most of the time without even knowing they're doing it because it's kind of the natural thing to do. Don't hurt people. Don't take their stuff. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's what the non-aggression principle is all about, and I just don't see it as relating to animals because um, you know they they live in what they call uh, what the founders uh, the the um, Enlightenment thinkers called a state of nature. Mm-hmm. Now let's that consider was specifically John Locke. Yeah, I don't know what it's uh, like in every farm, but I can tell you at my farm things are better than living out in the wild. The, the you know deer come down to eat my apples, uh, the fallen apples during uh, March, because they're starving to death. Because mm-hmm. life out in a state of nature is a, is you know the very edge of starvation. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the land will support as many animals as don't die of starvation, especially when you're talking about animals like deer and that sort of thing. So you know a, it, an animal in a state of nature is not going to have the really great life where you get a donut every day and belly rubs and all the good things that uh, they they get at uh, Edgewood Farms so you've no. got to take some pictures of yourself giving donuts to the pigs those would make great memes i uh, actually have one of me riding uh, a sow in the amplifier group you can if you join up for the amp program at amp.freetalklive.com you can see me on top of uh, dirty red six uh, Check it out. In the meantime, uh, we've got uh, Facebook at facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. I think you guys should be encouraging people to drop the drugs, drop the alcohol, and live a straight life. Why? And that's freedom. Well, that wait. is freedom. How, how can you say? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's freedom for you, but what if I enjoy altering my consciousness? Well, I think it's sad. Why? Um, it's a sad existence. Um, when people have to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. Oh, oh I'm not you, addicted. Now, now you're assuming addiction. Alcohol, we're talking about marijuana, we're talking about drug use in general. What about caffeine? Sad Are we talking about caffeine? I'm talking about something that, what you just said, is mind-altering. So oh, caffeine certainly is. You need a mind chocolate altering. candy bar. If you have a chocolate candy bar and there's caffeine in it, it doesn't get you high. Oh, you know well, wait is. a minute. Christy, I have a, I'm have sensitive to, to caffeine, and I can tell you, two Diet Cokes will make me a very angry, angry man. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $22 higher at $1,136 per ounce, and silver is $0.52 cents higher at $15.06 per ounce. It looks like precious metals have finally made the split from the stock market. 
We have plenty of Australian silver spiders and kangaroos in stock. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. The latest episode of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, October 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $241. Antiwar.com reports the Pentagon promised an investigation on Saturday after it was revealed that an AC-130 warplane carried out sustained fire against a Doctors Without Borders-run hospital on the outskirts of the Taliban-held city of Kunduz, killing 19, including 12 staffers and 3 children. The hospital was already overwhelmed by the huge number of casualties from the past week of fighting over Kunduz, which the Taliban seized on Monday. Doctors Without Borders is demanding clarification on what happened noting they contacted the U.S. after the first strike near the hospital to warn them it was so close and sustained attacks against the hospital continued for over 30 minutes after that. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul expressed condolences but did not apologize for the attack, while both the U.N. mission to Afghanistan and the Red Cross condemned the strikes, saying it was unacceptable to undermine humanitarian organizations in the war zone. Though Doctors Without Borders reported 19 dead and 37 injured as a preliminary toll, they added that 30 other people were unaccounted for, meaning the tolls will almost certainly rise in the hours to come. This is not the first time the U.S. has come under fire for its actions against hospitals in Afghanistan, though it is by far the biggest such incident. Back in 2009, there were a pair of incidents, including one in which U.S. ground troops attacked a hospital, forcing their way in and tying up the staff before smashing up the place. That hospital was run by the charity group, the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports many of Illinois' medical cannabis cultivation centers are harvesting their first medicinal cannabis crops this weekend. The 75,000-square-foot cultivation center in Barrie, Illinois, the biggest in the state, is already preparing its first shipment to patients. The center is one of two owned and managed by Revolution Enterprises. The state's medical cannabis law took effect on January 1, 2014, making Illinois the 20th state to approve the use of cannabis for specific medical conditions. Medical cannabis products will soon be available in dispensaries around the state. Tim McGraw, CEO of Revolution Enterprises, said the new industry will be a boon to the economy and to patients who need relief. The list of conditions approved for medical cannabis include debilitating conditions and diseases like cancer and AIDS, but does not include chronic pain or post-traumatic stress disorder, something McGraw hopes will soon change. On Wednesday, politicians and veterans met in Barrie to discuss the possibility of adding PTSD to the list of approved conditions. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot FPP Radio. 
Reuters reports as Germany celebrated 25 years since reunification on Saturday, President Joachim Gauck said Europe's refugee crisis posed a greater challenge to the country than the welding together of Western Germany and the former Communist East. Gauck, a former Lutheran pastor from East Germany who played a prominent role in the peaceful protests that led to the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, said the two halves of the country had become one over the past quarter of a century. Back then, West Germans cheered and clapped their Eastern peers as they crossed the border that had separated them for decades. Gawk, who has a largely ceremonial role but is considered a moral authority for the nation, warned that integrating refugees with different religions and cultures would be much rougher than uniting Germans, who shared the same language, national culture, and history even during their separation. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. An update now on a legal battle emerging around the Onion News Network's own Jode Kressbeckler. After the shocking story yesterday that a group of assailants attacked Congressman William Cummings, tied him to a horse, and dragged him through a briar patch, some are now saying these statements from Mr. Kressbeckler last week may have incited the attack. Boat-legging Congressman Cummings ought to be tied to a horse and dragged through a briar patch. Mr. Kressbeckler's show is billed as an opinion and entertainment program. Yes, it And he is. even calls himself nothing but a caterwauling old badger, so right. the claim that he would incite people to violence seems pretty far-fetched. He displayed a map of Congressman Cummings' home in relation to the nearest briar patch, told his viewers where to purchase a, quote, good pulling horse, and used a life-size dummy of Congressman Cummings to demonstrate effective knot tying techniques. You're right. You know, I think most reasonable people would see that as simply a rippled political satire. Right. Br briar patch is obviously a metaphor for the prickly political atmosphere in Washington, and drag from a horse means something else. Makes sense to me. This is the Onion News Network. And this is Liberty Conspiracy Radio on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. If you're streaming us over the airwaves and satellite, thank you very much for tuning in on this Sunday night, the 27th of September or the 28th of September, if you're seeing the sun right now, wherever you are, whatever time zone you call home. Thanks for joining us and being interested in economics, philosophy, history, and the moral treatment of one's neighbor. Coming in after Free Talk Live, we'll open up the Skype line in just a moment. It's Gardner.goldsmith.com.